players now. They have got good players. You know, really, I, I was asked, you know, about them. And I said all along, they look a good team. I'm not going to change my mind because they're playing us. It's up to us. Come on, let's get out. A very quick word. I don't know if David Seaman's going to wear those olive green shorts he was wearing in the warm-up. What do you think of those? I'll just make one comment. I always like us when we play in our normal kit. They're all white. Here's Mike Ingham. Well, a week ago tonight, the other half of British football here, Scotland departed from the World Cup in this stadium. Lightning, hopefully, is not about to strike in the same place twice. This very English-style stadium, really, is known as the Cauldron, and it is about to live up to its name. The two teams below are in the tunnel. The World Cup anthem resounds around the stadium. 100,000 people saw England and Argentina in Mexico in the Azteca. Tonight, roughly around about a third, 36,000, but the Argentinian fans are way to the left, about to turn the San Etienne Stadium into the River Plate Stadium. The two teams waiting patiently. We can see Paul Ince. Is the usual superstition with Paul Ince. He hasn't got his white England shirt on at the moment. He will come out and he will put his shirt on as he takes the field. The sides now being led out, first of all, by the yellow fair play banner down below. England at the moment currently are the leaders in the fair play league but they're interested in much more than that. As the referee leads the two sides into the arena and to the left, Argentina, yet another Diego. This one is Diego Simeone of Inter Milan, who's the captain of Argentina in 1998. And to the right, all in white, Alan Shearer, the England captain. Not as much tension, says Glenn Hoddle in this one as before the first game against Tunisia in Marseille England of course will return to Marseille if they can win tonight and I tell you what there will be tension in the air now no matter what Glenn Hoddle says the referee stands to attention Argentina to his left as we look England to the right and we wait for the national anthems from both countries It's a wonderful atmosphere. We were struggling to hear the Argentinian anthem there. Only the captain, Diego Simeone, singing it. The other standing very focused and concentrated. Now, God save the Queen. Well, there are supposed to be 36,000 in this stadium. 
It sounds like 136,000 as Alan Shearer leads the England players along the line of Argentinian players. There's a cursory shake of the hand down there. Now the serious business is about to get underway as the band leave the pitch. This, the colossal occasion to be described with Terry Butcher, first of all, by Alan Green. Uh, Zanetti and Ince exchange kisses, once club colleagues, of course, at Inter Milan. It's a shame about the mutual disrespect for the national anthems, that's the first thing to say. That's a great pity. And there's another practical difficulty immediately in the change of strips. Now, England all in white, and David Seaman with a quite distinctive goalkeeping outfit. But what about Roa? He's basically all in black, and his colleagues are all in navy. Now, Terry Butch, I think that's going to be very difficult for the referee to distinguish. Well, referees are very fussy these days, and in a game like this, one of the greatest internationals of the world at the highest level, you would have thought the referee would have been in to inspect the goalkeeper's shirts. They normally do. They normally make a, a really big fuss of these things, and uh, I can see there being problems because it, from the naked eye, it does look very, very dark. It's uh, almost as dark as the Argentinian players who wear the outfield shirts, and you can quite easily get them mixed up. So. The referee's got his job cut out here. We'll see. Here are the two teams. England, the goalkeeper is Seaman. The defenders are Neville, Adams and Campbell. In midfield, it's Anderton, Ince, Beckham, Scholes and Lasso. Then Owen and Shearer. Argentina have Roa in goal. Their defenders are Vivas, Ayala and Shamok. In midfield, it's Almeida, Zanetti, Garom, Simeone. Then it's Ortega. Then it's Batistuta and Lopez. Two of only six nations to have won the World Cup are represented here in Saint-Étienne tonight, despite it being the last 16. Somebody big is going to go out this evening. The referee is Kim Milton Nielsen from Denmark. He's just checking with his two linesmen. England All and White will be defending the end away to our right, but it will be Argentina who will kick off in their all navy strip. The referee is happy and uh, well he was happy at least the players are happy in the two linesmen but we obviously haven't quite reached nine o'clock yet in centre chain so he's brought them to order rather too quickly and that is a little bit unnerving isn't it terry it's unnerving and the players want to get on with it now the ball's there the, the crowd are in and you know it's, you just want to get this game underway and uh, you've had all the nerves all the t all the hype all the tension and everything else you just wanted to start so you can get your first touch of the ball in a, a very very important game some of the players or probably most of the players their biggest game of their career so far and careers could be made on this game as well well television and radio schedules throughout the world are dependent on this game kicking off at precisely the right minute the temperature has dropped markedly over the last hour and a half uh, we're told that it's now 23 degrees centigrade inside the stadium so it's much cooler than the steaming heat of the late morning and mid-afternoon and England will be thankful for that the pitch is completely cast in shadow. Whatever, wherever the sun is, it's out of our sight now. And the players still await. And this is terribly unfortunate. My watch is usually right, and I reckon it's 9 o'clock. Whistle is to the referee's lips, and now we are ready. And we get underway. Argentina against England in the last 16 of the World Cup. The winners to play Holland in Marseille on Saturday afternoon. Baron who looks like Dion Dublin to me, but he's a some player they're on. And it's played down the left-hand side for Lopez, one of the two strikers, to chase after it uh, for Lonely on this occasion. It's behind for an early England goal kick. I don't think we'll see much uh, tension on the pitch, to be honest. Both sets of players are really ready to go at each other. Argentina like to play one way, and that's directly at their opponents. They've got pace up front, they've got Veron in midfield, they're Dion Dublin looking like that one's quite right. But he plays, he plays very well, a lot of spirit, gets hold of the ball. He's the main man, and uh, Robbie Earl was saying for Jamaica's point of view, he was the fittest player on the pitch. They tried to make mark him, but he got away from everybody. Let's see if he can do that tonight. Here's uh, Lopez on the halfway line, just back to Almeida. Uh, forward to Ortega, good play by Ortega to Lopez, but he's doing the breaks to the right, Campbell's there and Campbell makes the interception for England and that was a good passing movement in the first minute from Argentina, Lasso collects, uh, plays a poor pass in the general direction of Owen and then Scholes is in to try to win it back for England but not so and uh, it's way back to Ayala who's one of six uh, players in this Argentina team who play the club football in Italy. It's hit up field. Campbell heads it away from the edge of the England D. Neville to the far side and Anderton who's had a very fine World Cup for England. Back to Neville. Played up over the halfway line. Owen jumps. Put off the defender. 
Andrin collects wide to Owen down the right Owen on to Shearer Shearer closely marked at the moment by Divas and it's out of play for an England throw in taken quickly by Beckham to his club colleague Scholes Beckham once more Scholes midway inside the Argentina half uh, forward down the right to Andrin who seemed to be bolt and the referee uh, the linesman didn't flag he was only a yard away and the referee indicates that Anderton died and waves him to get up but I thought he was bought well he, he played the ball through I think Braun's legs and was then blocked and uh, Henderson got a bit of a whack in the face we don't see many English players go down as you do a lot of continentals and I think Anderton was genuinely uh, blocked on that occasion but the referee didn't give it Adams pass wasn't good but Bannister going to give it away here's Michael Owen up to the edge of the penalty here. great tackle on the edge of the box Lasol shoots across the middle goal Shearer's there and can't get it that was a half chance for England it all came about by a, a misplaced pass I think it was Zanetti actually played the ball straight to Michael Owen he went past one defender was in in goal a great covering tackle by Ayala the ball ran free to Graham Lasso he mishit his shot to be fair right across the face of the goal but there was Shearer he read the fact that it wasn't going to go on target he came sliding in on the far post couldn't get to it and the ball went about 10 yards wide but uh, good start by Graham Lasso good start as well for, from England's point of view because it had been all Argentina they'd tested out the England back three but now it was uh, a case of England coming through I'll tell you what uh, Darren Andon's problem is he, he, he wears contact lenses and he, he clearly was bolt there and uh, the England physio was over there helping him out so Anderton's off the pitch at the moment England down to 10 men Owen seemed to be obstructed again not given by the Danish referee let's show in Ince is in as well Ince wins it but can't control the ball and it's hard to play down the near side of the field and it's going to be a throw in to Argentina uh, Anderton's uh, fit again back on the pitch Zanetti takes the throw in Zanetti runs in field running towards Paul Ince and then uh, maybe knowing Ince flick the ball to the right towards Ortega ahead uh, of Ortega and it's out of play for an England throw in hasn't quite settled on yet three and a half minutes play it's a bit of a frantic start isn't it the referees had to make one or two decisions which uh, unfortunately for England haven't gone their way a couple of obstructions I think we'll see a lot of that in the game so far but uh, no, neither team really getting the ball down and playing at the moment it's been a bit scrappy but England certainly had the best half chance of the match so far it's too pacey at the moment that's what it is nearly four minutes played England nil Argentina nil throw into Argentina down the near side there right Vivas takes it up over the halfway line to Verón Ortega and Verón Ortega once more Verón available Ortega has the ball flicks it right footed but it's stood and knocks it on and it's cleared by Gary Neville up over the halfway line towards Michael Owen careful header away by Vivas Zanetti on the halfway line right at the centre circle to Verón who's been one of the most impressive players in this World Cup for me so far nearly five minutes gone England and Argentina at Centre Chen the Argentinian fans outnumbering the England fans and outshouting them at the moment Argentina on the attack but it's has the ball into the penalty area out comes Seaman oh it's a penalty he's doing a penalty it was a rash challenge on Simeone it really was rash Seaman has been booked yellow card oh what a dreadful error for England to make so early in the game well it came from nothing really a speculative cross to the far post Simeone's gone there and to be fair to David Seaman that is never a penalty that is a disgraceful decision by the referee it was very similar to Ronaldo the penalty against Chile David Seaman went down at his feet pulled his arms away and then Simeone just caught David Seaman rather than David Seaman catching the Argentinian captain the referee was quite a way away to be fair but that was never a penalty never yeah, but, but the thing is we've seen penalties given in the World Cup for that and Simeone was running wide well, he we, wasn't running we, a goal yes we've all, seen, we've all seen penalties given but the referees as well they should be able to say, well, that wasn't a penalty. There's been penalties given like that in the World Cup. They must go back and look at videos. At the end of the day, he's given it. Never was a penalty. Argentina's best player so far. Ballistud already scored four times. One of them a penalty. Is this the fifth? Oh, it is. Seaman dived the right way to his right. But Batistuta slips the ball under the England goalkeeper. Seaman is furious. Argentina celebrate. We've only played five minutes. England nil. Argentina won. Well, not the side England wanted, and uh, a good penalty, but David Seaman diving to his right-hand side, got two hands to the ball. He's unlucky for David Seaman, just couldn't get enough to it, the ball just bouncing off his hands into the back of the net. Argentina get the lead that they scarcely deserve, to be fair, and they've had the best half chance, just one speculative ball into the box, David Seaman diving at the feet of Simeone, Simeone conning the referee, to be fair, and England 1-0 down. I'm not excusing it, Terry, I'm just saying... There have been a lot of successful con jobs done in the World Cup. And, and England, just as every other team, should be alert to that possibility. But well, the referee never started off well, did he? I mean, there was a couple of instances when, he, when there was um, a blockage by the, by the Italian players on us. I'm not saying it's all um, against England, but uh, in that occasion, when it came to making a crucial decision, he got it wrong.
Ortega, midway inside the England half, plays it towards uh, Veron, who'd run towards the penalty area, but it's cleared by England, only to Simeone, the captain. Back to Almeida, Simeone once more, and Argentina will now dictate the pace of this game. Shearer tries to win the ball back for England, can't do so. And it's played from Zanetti, but back to Ayala, another near side, and Argentina are on top, and we've only played six minutes. A penalty by Batistuta. Five live on the BBC, bringing in this action from Saint-Étienne, England nil, Argentina one. Ortega plays the ball through the legs of Lasso, uh, claims he was bolted. Uh, the referee says that nothing of the kind happened. Ince to Campbell, back to Adams. England's defence will be nervy now. Ince to Campbell once more, left-footed, upfield, uh, just reaches the halfway line, but easily intercepted by Divas, who sprints forward from a central defensive role. Ortega on towards Divas, Lasso is back, needs to clear quickly, he does so, into the crowd. Argentina obviously confident now, knocking the ball around well. England struggling to get the ball away. Argentina's uh, front two, Lopez and Batistuta, really pressing the England back line as they, as they should do, as any manager wants their forwards to do. And England not getting the ball away uncomfortably, and Graham Rousseau having to hack it into the crowd. And uh, there's a little disturbance in the crowd away to our left. I know that's main, and then mainly dominated by Argentina fans, and a disturbance away to the right as well. So it's fairly incidental at the moment, but there's certainly some crowd trouble inside St. Etienne. Argentina lead England by a goal to nil. Shearer, the England captain on the far side, struggling to make an impact at the moment. He hasn't got uh, any decent possession, but he wins a throw in. Anderton will take it. I'm now trying to keep my eyes right and left as well as the pitch. The throw in goes to Beckham, and Beckham gives the ball away, and England mustn't do that. Eight minutes played, they're a goal down. Ortega to Veron. Veron near side. There's no segregation, you see, in these games. There's definitely no segregation. Because there's certainly, I've seen uh, crosses of St George flags in the end of the uh, away to our left, which is overwhelmingly dominated by Argentina fans. Ortega tackled by Lasso on the halfway line. Then Lasso is tackled, but he wins the ball. Flicks it in, Felix Gold. Headed on to Owen. Owen's got room here. Owen running towards the penalty area. Exit the penalty. Head to the penalty area. He goes down. Penalty for England. Penalty for England. Caused by the pace of Michael Owen. And here's a chance to get level. Well, the referee's levelled it up straight away. I mean, uh, to me, that, that didn't look a penalty either. Michael Owen just diving in the box. Ayala was the man that came across. He put his arms up in the air. He might have just slightly touched Michael Owen, but Michael Owen went down. There was a lot of that we've seen in the World Cup. Michael Owen goes down in the box. For me, now, if England put that up, uh, put that in the back of the net, that's levelled the game up because that's another bad decision by the referee. And what, I, I don't know what happened there, but Ince has just been booked by the referee. I don't know what Ince... What on earth was Ince doing? running up to the referee in that situation a penalty's just been awarded so Ince has been booked Brassi Seaman's been booked Brassi it's 1-0 to Argentina but it's Alan Shearer skipper of England we've only played nine minutes is this the second goal can this bring England level the goalkeeper is Raw, who's had a very fine season with Mallorca in Spain but Shearer up he comes right footed into the net England are level, Shearer's 20th goal for his country, and it's 1-1, and England hysteria, away to our right, the England fans are loving it, it's 1-1. It's a great time to get back from a goal down, Shearer then showed the bottle, just put it to the goalkeeper's right, the goalkeeper did move to his right along his line, which he's entitled to do, but it was high, and it was safe, and it was in the back of the net, England level, referee Mr Nielsen from Denmark has leveled things up. It's 1-1 really, it should still be 0-0, two disgraceful decisions by the referee. I think Paul Ince got booked then protesting to the referee that Ayala was the last man and that possibly he should have got a red card as well. Uh, let the referee do it. I mean, uh, now we're in the knockout stages, we don't need players booked stupidly. And that was a stupid booking. Owen wins the ball and he tried to flick it towards Scholes and Scholes hadn't quite read it. And England, having had such a wretched start, are level again. And the game is wildly open. Here's Shamrock down the left-hand side. Astonishingly, though, so we thought it would be tight. Lopez, left edge of the penalty area, forced to retreat. Plays it back to uh, Almeida. Almeida just over the halfway line now. And into the Argentine half it goes with Ayala. Terry Butcher is punching his <laughs> fist in the air. No wonder, at 1-1. One, one. Have you got a bet on with Ian Payne? Yeah, we certainly have, yes. And uh, don't publicise what it's about. <laughs> I don't want to get either of you into trouble. We've got two penalties, Batistuta and Shearer. Successful penalties. Veron lets the ball run. Batistuta flicks it off. Ortega tackled by Adams. Headed on by Veron again. Ince takes it on his chest. Flicks it away. Beckham heads it clear. Up to the centre circle. 
and into Argentina's possession once more. Almeida, 10 yards over the halfway line to Ortega. Ortega seemed to be fouled, but play continues. Argentina have the ball. It's drifted forward into the penalty. A great run by Zanetti upfield, but it's through to Seaman. Yeah, Eamon's midfield not really got to grips with the Argentinians. Veron is running the show in the middle of the park and uh, Paul Ince and, uh, and Scholes and Beckham just don't, just do their job first and foremost and uh, stop the Argentinians from playing, especially Veron, and try and get England's game going. You need to make passes and get hold of the ball now. Fouled by Zanetti. Will all England is the song. I'm amazed that they're actually dominating the scene at the moment. But they are the England fans. 12 minutes played. Here in Saint Etienne, this is five live on the BBC, as you well should know. England won, Argentina won. Lesseau's free kick forward to the score of England's goal for the penalty spot. Shearer back to Lesseau. Shearer again. Excellent run by Lesseau into the penalty, into the penalty area, and he was slightly put off by the challenge of Ayala. He must have thought of half about going down. Uh, it might have been a third penalty, but the goalkeeper is the ball. Well, I wonder if Ayala had a taste of deja vu then with another England player running straight at him, right in the penalty area. I think if he'd have touched. If he'd have touched Graham Lasso, uh, he would have gone down for the penalty. As it was, Graham so just lifted the ball over him, but his touch was just a bit too heavy, and the ball ran through to Carlos Roa. But a good one-two between Lasso and Shearer, and it's good to see England play a couple of passes, nice little one-two, and then make a positive run into the box. Uh, Glenn Hobble is out, out of his dugout, so just issuing fresh instruction to his players out there. He can't be all that happy with the way the midfield is functioning. England have a free kick just over the halfway line, near side, their left. Shearer to Skull. Skull's, oh, poor ball, putting Gary Neville under pressure from Lopez. Neville just flicks it to the halfway line where it's met by Simeone. Back to Veron, who's uh, seen an awful lot of the ball in the opening 13 minutes. Veron to Almeida. Almeida to Ortega. Back to Simeone once more. Neat football by Argentina. Drifted upfield, but it's was offside. Uh, though he collects the ball very well inside the penalty here. Free kick to England. It's good movement, isn't it, by the, by the front two, Lopez and Batistuta. They're coming short. Uh, Almeida and Veron, they're really running the midfield. And uh, they, when they have good possession of the ball, they're either dinking the ball over the midf uh, England's midfield in, in front of their defensive three, or they're hitting long balls, long diagonals over the top. And Saul Campbell, Gary Neville and Tony Adams have got their work cut out because it's easy when you're facing the plays when strikers make those runs in behind you. Well, it is what we thought it would be. It's an absolutely immense fixture. Shearer heads the ball down towards the Argentina penalty area, but it's taken away well by Almeida. A foot to Veron, who's on his own across the halfway line, through the centre circle, flick towards the left, but his student is into the penalty. There goes the cross from Lopez, headed away by Adams, and might be kept in play by Lesseau. No, he doesn't, and it's a throw into Argentina level over the edge of England's penalty area. Some of their movement, the Argentinian forwards, Brilliant. when the ball goes into a wide position, is sharp and is quick, is direct. England players watching the ball need to watch the man as well. You know, he has a rapid head movement to watch the ball and watch the man as well, because their movement is so good. Well, we were thinking the other night um, that arguably Argentina are the only South American country that's not frightened of Brazil. They always see them as at uh, best for Brazil equals. And remember, of course, they did. It was only friendly, but they did win uh, away in the Maracanã Stadium in the build-up to this World Cup. 1-0 from a goal scored by Claudio Lopez. Here's Almeida. 1-1 here in centre champ between England and Argentina. Two goals, two penalties, one struck by Batistuta, then the equaliser from Shearer. Pass back to Seaman was a little short, and Seaman hurried into the clearance on the far side. Shamat heads it back. Beckham tries to head it on to Owen, but mistimes his jump, and it's with Veron again, and he needs to be picked up. He's seen far too much of it. Zanetti to Veron, Veron to Lopez. Uh, Veron lost his footing, which is just as well for England, and Ince got in the tackle. Good play by Paul Ince. Now David Beckham, who's struggling to get into the game, but he finds Owen. Owen with the pace coming forward again. Owen still going. Owen into the penalty area. Owen scores! It's an absolutely fantastic goal by Michael Owen. His way had to be in this England team. It's pace, it's finishing, it's his third goal for his country. And England haven't been a goal down or 2 1 up. What a goal that was. That came right from the back. It was Paul Ince that broke the move up in midfield. The ball went through to Michael Owen. He skipped the tackles of Shamo went inside Ayala Ayala couldn't do anything about it just sheer pace took him Roa came out he had no chance the little, the little striker from Liverpool went past his man on the edge of the box threw the goalkeeper out there was only one thing he was going to do he was going to smash it past the keeper but he smashed it with a lot of directness and a lot of thought and a lot of care what a goal from Michael Owen great great attitude great great goal I just hope Glenn Hoddle now looks at Owen and says I got it wrong this boy can finish what a goal!
2 1 to England, and what a game we've got. We've only played 16 minutes. It's fantastic here in Centre Chet. The game of the tournament, unquestionably. Baron plays the ball into the England penalty area. It bounces a couple of times and behind so that we can catch our breath. My, what a fantastic run. Oh, absolutely everything right. Everything right for Bowen. He's 18 years of age. Dear, oh dear. Goal kick to England. <laughs> Try and catch your breath. Calm down. Your blood pressure's getting too high for you now. It's a long oh. way to go. Oh, yeah, that was a, it was a fantastic bit of school, but it's just sheer pace. If you run at defenders, no matter who they are, they're the best defenders in the world, and Ayala is one of the best defenders in the world, but he was made to look a fool on that occasion because of the sheer pace and tenacity of the little player. And Owens around the defender again, then he's brought down. And Shamos surely must be booked for that. Oh, it's got to be a yellow card. It's a free kick and he's not producing the yellow card. Well, that's an absolute nonsense. It was quite deliberate trip. Yeah, I think it was. He just got past Shamo on the outside. It was uh, in a wide position, and Mr. Nielsen certainly is consistent. He's consistently bad at the moment. He's having a bit of a nightmare. Go on, young Michael. Frighten the life out of them. 2-1 to England. 17 minutes gone. England free kick. A couple of yards in for the right touch line. And it's uh, Lasso across there, and David Beckham... Andern's not involved in this one, they usually are. It's Beckham, right-footed, into the near post, headed away by Batistuta. Ends Follies, right-footed, just up on with the crossbar, great strike. Well, it was one of England's set-piece routines again, the ball just being picked up by Darren Anderton, no, by Graham Lasso, he didn't put it down, Anderton whipped it in, it was headed out, and Paul Ince came in on the volley, the ball bounced just in front of him, he caught it beautifully on the volley from about 30 yards, it dipped, but didn't quite dip under... Carlos Roa's uh, crossbar great strike by the uh, midfield player and that'll really give England heart the fact that they can get free kicks and get set plays going I hope you're glad you're listening to 5 Live England lead 2-1 Ortega sprints forward towards the penalty and he flicks it through the legs of Barry Stuta Lopez is there back to Verón this is a wonderful game Verón chips the ball forward Campbell heads it away from the D collected by Simeone into the penalty area Lopez is there and the header behind by Gary Neville behind for a corner it was a great defensive header it's a great defensive header the ball got cleared out and then it was just hooked back into the space behind the England defence in between the keeper and the back three and then Neville had to dive and head it for a corner great defending Argentina corner from the left and hit left footed high Simeone rises heads it but it only drifts off the top of his head and Scholes does the right thing on the volley whacks it upfield Owen heads it on well played Owen again finding Shearer on the halfway line near side the left Beckham's available so too is Scholes Anderton with a little bit of room in the centre circle excellent ball forward by Scholes though to Beckham now Anderton's got great room down the flanks Beckham picks him out Anderton running down the far side Level with the edge of the penalty here. Crosses in. Owens there. Struck to his skulls. Skulls was he bulk? Obstructed did no, says the referee. Oh dear. Ayala might have been the offender, but play continues. And it's cleared up towards Ortega. Haven't England come back well? A goal down to Batty stood his penalty after four minutes. Then Shearer equalizing the penalty after ten. And then on with a stunning strike. 2 1 England. Ince, left by Shearer, great play by Shearer. Lasso crosses low, scores is there, trying to hit it on the volley, and only just it into the air and into the arms of the goalkeeper. Well, England, England on top of the moment, uh, good play by Gary Neville to win the ball back from Ortega. The ball got spread to the to the wide left hand side. Lasso's cross could have been better, slightly behind scores. A ball to the far post would have profited because Alan Shearer was there, but uh, great play by England, kept the ball well, made three or four passes, got up onto the left hand side. Veron to Ortega forward to Veron again Beckham is hustling and Veron uh, he wants a corner and he's not going to get it and now he's uh, bellowing at the linesman who will ignore him and Veron stabs the ball back to David Seaman and uh, David just take your time over this please just j just a few seconds thank you we've played 20 minutes oh, 20 minutes but do, do feels not, like two doesn't it do you not get the, do you not get the feeling as well when Argentina go forward their midfield is very good at Almeida is in there, Ortega's in there, Veron's in there, they've got good pace and good vision. I mean, the movement of the front two is excellent. England really have their work cut out, but at the moment, they're doing reasonably well, and Beckham's coming more into the game, and so is Scholes. Ayala to Zanetti, near side, that's the Argentina right. Infield to Almeida, just short of the halfway line, right of the centre circle. Lots of navy blue shirts ahead of him, one is Ortega. Near side, a yard in from the right touch line, faced by Lasso. Ortega back heels the ball, cleverly knew what he was doing Almeida forward to Batistuta Batistuta with his uh, back to England defenders and he's brought down Adams claims it was a dive but the referee says no it's a free kick and it's about 30 yards from goal and we play 21 and a half frantic 
engrossing minutes here in Saint-Étienne. Five live on the BBC. What's Passarella thinking on the bench? Hey. His team goes one up, perfect, early goal. England come back, England lead 2-1. Veron with a free kick. Now, how many players have they committed forward? Six, seven that I can see in the vicinity of the England penalty area. And England have everyone behind the ball, including young Owen. Veron waits. The referee's happy with the England wall. Here he comes, right footed, drifted towards the far post. And there was a foul by Simeone on Gary Neville. And it's a, a thankful free kick for England. I think Alati has got one one thing right, the referee. That was a, a ball to the far post. Gary Neville was uh, tangling with Simeone. Simeone just pulled him down. Quite clearly a foul. The referee about five yards away. Well positioned, definitely a free kick. And he's got one decision right. I can't believe that. How long has it taken? 22 minutes. Uh, Michael, just close this game out. No more goals. Well, I know that Alan, four years ago, saw the game of the tournament involving Argentina at this stage. Romania beat Argentina 3-2. This is the game of the tournament so far. Anderton down the England right, slips as he gets the ball in. Ayala heads it out of the area. And the clearance to be completed by Shamut down that left-hand side. He played uh, Veron into trouble there. Veron, who's a great player, turned away from Alan Shearer. And now it comes below to this near side and Zanetti. Five live. England 2, Argentina 1. Still Zanetti for Argentina. And the shot in the end is over the bar. And when we were in Lance the other night, when David Beckham scored, that was a moment of high emotion. Mike, I, I, I'm struggling to think of an England player, Terry, scoring a goal like that at this level, the one that Michael Owen scored here tonight. Well, quite incredible. But it came from our defensive third, went all the way up to Michael Owen. He took the defenders on. He just took them on for pace, pushed the ball to one side. Ayala had no answer to pace whatsoever. But when he got into the box, it was ice cold. Carlos Roa came out to narrow the angle, but he bulleted the shot with a clever direction. A lot of pace, a lot of power, but it was always going to end up in the back of the net. I mean, it was really, really mature play. Glenn Hoddle wants to redress the balance from 1986 when, of course, Maradona scored a superb solo goal. Michael Owen was only six then. Now here's the number 10 for Argentina these days. Ortega. England mustn't give him any room in midfield. Adams doesn't get the challenge in. And then Ortega slips the ball too far ahead of Simeone. And it's going to be a goal kick to England. But, Terry, the game still hasn't settled down yet, really, has it? Nobody's no. really got control of it. I mean, the pace of the game is great because both teams are going hell for leather at each other. And uh, just concern with England midfield, that's where the key to the Argentinian success is. That's their play in midfield. They're on Almeida, Ortega, Zanetti. They've got a little triangle in there, which they're getting hold of the ball. And England have got a lot of work to do in their skulls, Ince in particular, and Beckham. They've got to work harder in there to deny the, the pressure and deny the possession of the Argentinian. Coming into this game, Argentina hadn't conceded a goal for eight matches. They conceded two inside the first 20 minutes here. We've played 25, and now the real danger man, Veron, for Argentina. 30 yards out, that's a poor shot from him, and it'll be interesting to see what Veron is like under pressure, because he hasn't been put under pressure yet in the matches in which Argentina stroll through in the group. Veron, by the way, his father played for that famous, infamous Estudiantes de la Plata team that played those rugged matches against Manchester United back in the 60s. It's going to be an England goal kick. Seaman takes it. England 2, Argentina 1. 20 minutes to go still in the first half. Shearer is fouled by Vivas. Two England yellow cards already. David Seaman following the incident which led to the Argentinian penalty. The foul on Simeone. And then a yellow card but for Paul Ince for protesting that I think Ayala should have had a, a card as well. Batistuta scored his first, fifth goal of the tournament to go level with Vieri to give Argentina the lead. Shearer with a penalty and Michael Owen. And now this England free kick to be taken left side, near side by Graham Lasso. Lasso takes his time, hits it towards Shearer, but it doesn't reach Shearer. Headed away by Shamo to the far side and it's going to be an England throw in. Beckham, who really struggled to get into the match inside the first 10 minutes, retrieves the ball, gives it to his Manchester United teammate, Gary Neville. Halfway inside the Argentina half, far side. This is the England right. Shearer trying to bring the ball down, clips it forward, looks for Beckham. Beckham can't keep it in and it's a goal kick. Well, a bit of scrappy play that England had good possession and uh, from the throw in. I always think, well, if you've got a throw in, you should retain possession and... Uh make it hard for the opposition to win it back but uh, in that case David Beckham just slid the ball out for a harmless goal kick England lead 2-1 but it's still a very very dangerous fixture for them against a formidable awesome at times Argentina side 
It's going to be Argentina's ball over on the far side. This is their left-hand side, and they're getting players forward now from the back, anticipating perhaps a long throw to be taken by their captain from Inter Milan, Diego Simeone. Batistuta at the moment lurking on the edge of the area. The ball is thrown down to Ortega, and Seaman will gather that in and clear downfield, right-footed, only Shearer inside the Argentina half. It's taken away from him in the air and tidied up inside the centre circle by Veron. And now Almeida. Almeida finds Ortega. Ortega turns and turns past Ince, and he's gone past Beckham as well. Danger here for England, and he shows too much of the ball to Adams, and it's clouted away eventually by the so to the far side. But real danger any time the likes of Ortega get on the ball. It's now a free kick to Argentina, and they've taken it quickly, and the ball once more is with Veron. Veron, along the floor he rolls it, tries to find Lopez, the man who scored the goal which beat Brazil in Rio. It's now down that left-hand side. Simeone's there, tucks it back to Almeida, just inside the England half. England leading 2-1, they've come from behind here, after Batistuta's penalty, after only five minutes in such an open game, perhaps too open really, for Glenn Hoddle's liking. It's with Vivas. Vivas, England don't get the tackles in and Zanetti has slipped away from Lasso. Lasso comes back, Campbell and Lasso together but still they can't clear Simeone goes down now under Campbell's challenge referee gives the free kick 25 yards away from Seaman's goal well Campbell just a little guilty stick in his hands out. if you're going to put your, your arms out to try and tackle an opponent he's going to go down especially Simeone, he went down with David Seaman for that uh, Argentinian penalty but it's a tricky situation now for England it's about 25 yards out slightly to the right of middle England have got four players five, six players in the wall Batistuta, he's on the ball at the moment absolute powder keg of an atmosphere here in San Etienne Argentina's free kick Batistuta at the moment is about eight yards away from the ball surely he's going to be the man to try and not only score but become the leading goal scorer in the World Cup Veron is pointing the ball is set up for Batistuta it's driven into an England wall and Campbell clears still inside the England half Gary Neville jumping over on the far side good turn by Argentina the ball's back on the edge of the centre circle Veron's involved once more he's involved in just about everything as Ayala the sweeper good little spell here for Argentina 2-1 to England Shearer with a penalty equaliser and Michael Owen with a spectacular second goal for England England can see now another free kick this one's wider over on the far side Gary Neville was the culprit they've taken it quickly and they find Ariel Ortega who looks so much like a young Maradona from here still Argentina possession everybody back from England inside the half away to our right as uh, Vivas plays it quickly Lopez can't control it Shearer turns and is fouled by Vivas and England with much relief have a free kick and they just want to try and slow it down a little bit because the Argentinian machine their, mid their midfield machines just clicked into gear they've got good possession they look comfortable England just gu guilty of giving the ball away when they do win it back and uh, uh, just like that, Gary Neville just put the ball out for a throw and they've got to keep hold of the ball. Beckham and Scholes and Ince now hold the key for England. They've got to get to grips with this midfield. That was dreadful from Gary Neville. That is exactly what England can't afford to do in this game. They cannot close this game down at the moment. There is far too long to go. Still another hour. England defend a 2-1 lead. They'll need another one, I think, here against a very resilient Argentina side. The ball is with Adams and he knocks it sensibly to this near side. The So, who's doing all right so far down this left-hand side for England. The So, infield to Paul Ince, perhaps England's most important player tonight if they're going to win the game. Ince drags the ball with him and then tumbles over under a challenge from Gabriel Batistuta. And Terry Butcher, using all his experience in the commentary box here, just signals calm down. That's what England need to do after this frenetic opening. 15 minutes left in the first half. We see Glenn Hoddle making all sorts of windmill signals down there. Graham Lasso to take this free kick for England. Just a couple of yards in from the near touchline. He knocks it straight to the Argentinian defender. He was trying to find Scholes. Argentina clear. Ortega hits it long. Across comes Sol Campbell immediately. And uh, he turns, and he turns well. And he uh, completely prevents Batistuta from moving on to that ball just one flash so far from Batistuta the penalty which Seaman almost managed to save and now Owen turning away from Vivas on the halfway line here he goes again Michael Owen surely not again it's been deflected this time it's deflected off Shamo Owen didn't really strike it as cleanly as he wanted to but he's got a corner down the far side the England right and I tell you what he's really putting the fear into these Argentina defenders 
Well, I wonder what Argentina's uh, manager, Daniel Passarella, would have done when faced with Michael Owen coming through. I think he's going to have to try and do one or two things and make sure that uh, he doesn't try and pick the ball up from a deep position and get a man marker on him as quick as he can. Can England deliver the right sort of corner here? Here it comes. Beckham takes it. It's fisted away by the goalkeeper. And now Lopez on the edge of the Argentina area picks out Ortega on the halfway line and this is now where England have to cover quickly as Ortega is flying Batistuta ahead of him he tries to find Batistuta it was a poor final pass that by Ortega and that's good from England's point of view that's frustration for Argentina and Ortega and the goal kick for Seaman what a player he looks doesn't he Oriol Ortega what a player number 10 on on his back and he's playing every bit like Maradona in my opinion he gets the ball from England's corner the ball punched away picked the ball up ran straight at the England defence he had two men over on the right hand side one was Batistuta one was Veron he picked that Batistuta over hit the pass and lucky for England it went for a goal kick but that came from our corner on five live the game of the World Cup so far as Michael Owen is bolted again by Vivas down there that must be a last warning for Vivas quite a few fouls from him already 11 minutes left in this incredible first half in San Etienne England leading by two goals to one and it's going to be an England free kick near side. We've got Lasso and we've got Beckham over the ball. At the moment, Adams has not gone forward from the back. He's walking slowly towards Lasso and Beckham. And uh, he's actually standing alongside Graham Lasso at the moment. In the penalty area, Scholes, Owen and Sheeran. Now, what have England got at their sleeve? And uh, Adams makes a late charge. Beckham curls the ball in. It's not good enough. It's headed away by Argentina. Back inside the centre circle. But a chance for Adams, who's still inside the Argentina half. And he manages to get to it first. Puts the ball down the left-hand side. Lasso has gone past Sanetti. Can he get the cross in? What he did do, it's headed behind for a corner. Great play by Graham Lasso. The ball actually headed out from England's free kick. It was won by Salt Campbell. Down to Tony Adams. He played it to Graham Lasso. Went past... Uh, Zanetti quite, quite easily down the left-hand side and then couldn't quite pick an England player out with his left foot across but uh, once again Graham Lasso getting into a very good position England do need, it sounds greedy but they do need the cushion of another goal here 2-1 they lead it's a corner near side. It's taken by Beckham to the far post. Adams can't reach it. It might fall instead to Anderton. It's been blocked by Argentina. All over the place they are at the moment in the area. But now here comes a dangerous potential counter-attack. Argentina on the halfway line. It comes to Lopez near side. England trying to get the white shirts back as Lopez rolls it rather lazily across the field. And that's easily snuffed out by Adams. And Adams, with great command, finds Lasso. Lasso plays it quickly down the line. Shearer won't get to that one, and he screams straight away at Lasso. We have ten minutes left in the first half. This volcanic game. England two, Argentina one. The ball on the edge of the Argentina area. Holland, of course, watching, I'm sure, and waiting for the winners of this game. The ball is with Ortega. Not for long. He plays it back into the Argentina defence. Argentina now finding Ortega. The twinkle-toed player from Valencia. Infield, Veron steps over it. Brilliant dummy from Veron. Into the movement now comes Almeida. Almeida now up towards the edge of the area. Quick turn by Lopez. Seaman will have to dive at the feet of Simeone. And this time that was a clean take by David Seaman. And he can clear downfield. Lopez turned well inside Gary Neville I think just onto his right foot just on the edge of England's penalty area the shot did take a deflection and running through to David Seaman was able to come out pretty quickly because Simeone was onto it again he just left his foot dangling David Seaman coming out David Beckham protesting to the referee as Simeone left his foot in Anderton retrieves the ball down the England right and then it's played by David Beckham off an Argentinian midfield player and it scuttles away to that far side for an England throw-in. Michael Owen taking plenty of time in getting the ball, throwing it down to Anderton, who immediately then throws it down to Gary Neville. This is good, sensible, professional play from England. Less than 10 minutes left in the first half. Veron's getting impatient as England take the throw and they find Shearer near the corner flag over on the far side, on the right. England 2, Argentina 1. Brilliant play by the captain. Shearer wins the corner. You're listening to Five Live, of course, this final second-round game in the last 16, the final quarter-final place to be decided. Holland against England or Argentina in Marseille on Saturday. England leading 2-1. Still lots and lots of work to do as Beckham takes this England corner to the far post. Everybody's missed that. It'll fall to Graham Lasso. Lasso picks it up and then finds Owen. Scorer of one of the most thrilling goals ever seen by an England player, certainly at World Cup level. The ball is back with Adams inside his own half. 
Adams hits it to the far side and that's not well directed. I don't, oh, Beckham, brilliant control. Superb control from Beckham. Didn't give it up. Got there. Then he's tackled on the halfway line by Badistuta and he might need some attention as well. That was a poor challenge from Badistuta and he's going to be lucky not to get a yellow card for it. Free kick to England. Yeah, it was a poor challenge and uh, I think he did attempt to go for the ball. Just caught David Beckham high. Great control by David Beckham from a slightly miscued uh, Tony Adams pass but uh, it's good to see the Manchester United player get into the game and uh, pick up one or two good touches now Shearer asking a lot of Anderton this time down the right hand side Argentina get it away they're in danger of overrunning this and they've given it away Anderton is a little bit tight Anderton a little bit short to David Beckham and eventually that goes off uh, Veron who at the moment is not having the same influence as he had in the first 15 or 20 minutes the two England goals have changed the move it's going to be a throw to England, halfway inside the Argentina half, right-hand side, far side, taken and looking for Alan Shearer. Shearer's going to go out there against his marker, oh, and the, the linesman has signalled a foul by Shearer on Shamot, and that's a free kick to Argentina. Yeah, I think Alan Shearer just probably pushed Shamot on the far side, and uh, he's right in front of the linesman, the linesman have no excuse of not seeing anything. We just had an interesting shot there from one of the cameras in the ground of Ian Wright wearing... Across to St George, he's here, I saw him, I had a few drinks with him the other night. He's certainly up for the match. Long dangerous ball into the England area and Campbell's desperate for Seaman to take it, but the whistle's gone anyway from uh, the referee, Kim Nielsen, who gave a couple of dodgy penalties, we think, here. And in the end, well, they didn't really matter because they cancelled each other out. Although England showed great courage and character to come back, having conceded one after only five minutes. David Seaman's kick downfield, Shearer jumping, heading the ball on, looking to Owen, can Skulls get there? Oh, Skulls should have scored, and he's put it wide. Paul Skulls should have scored there. Five minutes left in the first half, that should have been 3-1 to England. Well, call it route one football, call it the long ball, call it what you will, but it, uh, it was almost resulted in that third goal for England. It was a great goal kick by, or free kick by David Seaman, launched it, must be about 60 to 70 yards up the pitch. Alan Shearer won it with a beautiful header right across the face of the goal. Paul Scholes coming in on his left foot, met it on the half volley, but just put it about two or three feet wide of the far post. Should have hit the target, should have been 3-1. Almost shaved the post. A let off for Argentina in this very, very open Second round game in the World Cup in St Etienne, live on Five Live. England trying to get their tackles in, inside their own half. The ball is with Vivas, the centre-back. High ball, and uh, it's a loose one from Vivas. And David Seaman's there, throws it now, looking for Anderton, down that far side. Anderton galloping forward, then he checks. Then he plays it brilliantly up towards Shearer on the halfway line, who tucks it back to Scholes. Scholes turns away from Ortega. Back to Shearer, doesn't control it first time, and England have lost possession. Ortega once more. That's a good ball from Ortega, and this could be dangerous for England. The shot in the end, oh, that's dreadful from Shamok. The man from uh, Lazio, the man who's going to Atletico Madrid, we understand it's a goal kick to Seaman and England with about four and a half minutes left. Well, I don't mind them shooting from that far out, 25 yards, 30 yards. They had a lot more options open there. Shamrock, they had a lot more options to his left. As Batistuda to his right was Lopez. Ortega was sniffing about. He should have kept his head and uh, passed the ball. I'm sure Daniel Passarella will want to get his team in and say, look, keep your head, keep passing because we'll get through. And at the well, same time, I'm pleased that England's midfield has really got to grips now with the Argentinian threesome. But will they live to regret that miss from Paul Scholes, I wonder? Four minutes to go here in St Etienne in the first half. 2-1 to England, a goal behind after only five minutes. Gabriel Batistuta, the scorer, from a penalty. Argentina now with Almeida, turning slowly and trying to dictate from midfield. It's now Ortega, running square, the man who came on symbolically for Maradona in the last World Cup. The ball now with Vivas near side, back in again to Ortega beautiful turn away from Ince and from Scholes, Ortega into Badistuta, Campbell hasn't cleared and Badistuta hits it over the bar well great run by Ortega, he nutmegged about two England players on the edge of the box, a great run nutmegged Paul Scholes coming into the edge of the area slipped the ball inside of Badistuta several England players went to ground, the ball rebounding off Badistuta, snatched at his shot about two yards inside the box and it went about two or three yards over the bar. Let off for England, that could have been 2-2, but England, desperate defending, could have cleared their lines, didn't, but it had a chance. Terry, that's why England need a third, I think, here. That's why this third goal could be so important to them, because Argentina, with another 45 minutes left in the second half, of course, always capable of moments like that. Magic, I mean, they're terrific footballers. Quick one-twos, Ortega always involved, and Badistuta, one of the top three or four strikers in the world. Now here comes Zanetti. 
England haven't taken it away from him. Zanetti, Simeone, onto Lopez. Wonderful challenge from Campbell, but the danger's not cleared as Veron takes hold of it. In comes a great challenge now from Anderton. And England try and counter-attack with Scholes. Scholes down the far side and uh, Darren Anderton. Michael Owens running towards the area. Anderton hasn't seen him. Anderton now could settle for the corner kick. No, he poor, the ball's gone out of play. That will be a corner. And England are very lucky there because... No, it's not a corner. Anderton did keep it in and Argentina have cleared that wasn't the greatest of crosses but what a fantastic challenge a few moments ago from Sol Campbell the ball now bouncing awkwardly for Batistuta on the halfway line Ince comes in and the referee didn't like the second challenge from Paul Ince Argentina not the free kick short, short to Ortega Ortega skips away from Graham Lasso. this is one of his best periods in the game so far Ortega again just inside the area England have to be careful here Ortega slides it square and it was behind everybody and Adams takes it away and Owen drops back inside his own half and plays a beautiful return pass to Adams Adams can see nobody available so knocks it square again to the far side and in the end Beckham hits it long but loosely straight back to the Argentina defenders we have two and a half minutes left in the first half in St Etienne coming to you live on BBC National Radio 5 Live Adams looking for his Arsenal goalkeeper Seaman and he's there Ortega some player he's the best man on the pitch so far great running side slipped the ball inside and then inside that England penalty area and there was David Beckham coming back to rescue it England managing to clear but he's such a good player Ortega he's got such a great movement he's like Diego Maradona in that he can dribble with the ball he's got great close control goes past people as if they weren't there the referee slipped over the crowd like that England 2 Argentina 1 Badistuta giving Argentina the lead after only 5 minutes England responding likewise with a penalty from Shearer and then a dream of a goal from Michael Owen the ball inside the centre circle England mustn't give Argentina an inch in midfield as they struggle once more and then in the end they do manage to dig it away from Veron. it's a bit tight and congested in midfield the whistle's gone late from the referee and there's a yellow card now for something off the ball for Veron. Yeah, actually it was uh, uh, Michael Owen just to slip the ball inside I think it was two goals and then Veron really caught him late but the referee was only two yards away couldn't miss it and produced the first yellow card for Argentina they have played in this tournament so far, Argentina, with great discipline. When you think of Argentina sides of the past who've had their problems with their temperament, they played with great composure under Passarella, as now following the free kick, Shearer down the left-hand side, wide on this near side, tucks it back superbly to Lasso. Back again to Shearer. The players in the area waiting for the ball to come in from Shearer. Clipped in by Shearer, headed away by Argentina. Good defensive work there. And now they look to the danger man once more. El Burrito himself, Ortega. Ortega, now to Inter Milan's Zanetti, right-hand side. Long one from Zanetti. Lopez is there. Campbell hasn't got the challenge in. Lopez square, straight to the near post. And David Seaman. As Batistuta runs into the back of the net, that's where the cross should have gone, of course, towards Batistuta. And Seaman clears, but there are some moments of real trepidation at times here for Glenn Hoddle down there on the England bench. As we now... Enter, not quite the time to be added on for the, the time that the referee will play on and now England concede another free kick right on the edge of the area. A free kick to Argentina to the right. As we look at it, it's no more than three or four yards away from the area and everybody in a white shirt now will be needed to come back and defend this. Badistruta took the last one. He's now got the ball under his right arm. He's looking across at Daniel Passarella, his coach, on the line here. Passarella left Batistuta out of his team, would you believe, for about 10 months. Since he came back, he's been doing what comes naturally and scoring goals all over the place. Again, Veron and Batistuta look at Passarella. And Glenn Hoddle, a few yards away from Passarella, wonders what they might have here up their sleeve in added time at the end of a dramatic first half. It's Veron, places to Zanetti, an equalising goal by Zanetti, left-footed. That was what the free kick was all about. They were all looking at Batistuta and Veron. Eventually, the ball was played through to Zanetti. The left foot was swept past David Seaman. And right on half-time, it's 2-2. Well, no wonder Daniel Pesarella was on his feet. That goal came right off the training ground. It was a well-worked routine. It worked ever so well because it produced the equaliser. England caught cold. There was a huge gap to the right of the England wall. We all thought Batistuta was going to curl it. 
There was Simeone there with his left foot as well, he could have called it. It was just played short and in the end, Zanetti just peeled away from the wall. One close control with his right foot and smashed the ball past David Seaman. David Seaman, no chance on that occasion. England caught napping, Argentina equalised right on the stroke of half-time. What a time to score a goal. The half-time whistle goes. It's a different atmosphere now in the stadium. Javier Zanetti of Inter Milan has equalised. What a first half. Terry Butcher. An unbelievable first quarter of an hour. England went two and up, went behind to a, a debatable penalty. Batatuda scored. Shearer equalised with another debatable penalty. The referee got it wrong on two occasions, but the scores were level. And then Michael Owen produced one of the goals of the tournament to give England the lead. Paul Scholes had a great chance to make it 3 1. Batatuda should have levelled before Zanetti did that just before half time. It's been a great 45 minutes. There's more goals in this match, I'm sure. Well, we said throughout the first half that England would need at least one more to win this game. And Paul Scholes should have scored it. They should have been 3-1 up. The half-time score after the most dramatic 45 minutes, 2-2. Thank you very much. If you kept quiet when Owen scored, you should see a doctor. Jimmy Armfield. Well, it's the best 45 minutes we've seen in the World Cup so far. And I'm pleased to say England have been absolutely terrific. The two penalties, both slightly debatable, particularly Owen's. Uh, and then they had this goal from Owen and his pace for about 15 minutes was electrifying and they couldn't handle him and I'm not so sure about their defence and I think, you know, the way we're going I felt Scholes was going to get a goal, I said to you, didn't I? You did? I could say, I thought Scholes, and he had the wonderful chance if that had have gone in, 3-1 but this wonderful free kick they've produced at half time you know, it was a, you know, let's give credit to it super free kick they're a very good team I've said before I'm not so sure about the back players I'm still not so sure about them it's anybody's game we've played a great part in this this is a wonderful and England in my opinion have been absolutely fantastic England versus Argentina live from San Etienne France 98 on 5 Live your World Cup station if you've got anything to say about the World Cup, then you can ring Richard Littlejohn after this programme. 0500 909 693. 0500 909 693. Now, this game, despite it being very hard, very skillful, has been played in a wonderful spirit. There was one moment just after Owen scored when Veron, the bald-headed midfield player for Argentina, put his arm around Owen and gave him a pat on the shoulder and said, well done. You don't often see that sort of thing, do you, Jimmy? Not often, no. But uh, I think that's one, of the, that's one of the great World Cup goals I've seen. I would put that Owens. really oh yes I would take you know talk about young players making an impact in World Cup reminds me of Pelly coming in in 1958 as a young teenager it was that sort of impact of a goal he picked it up you know around the center circle and he ran past two world class defenders and he thumped the ball into the angle of the of the net it was, really was world class goal obviously Glenn Hoddle will be disappointed to concede a goal so close to half time but do you think the Argentine team uh, basically they should have had a goal by then no no I don't think you know it's you, you get what you make I mean so to be fair I think there was a period for about 10 minutes before the break where Ortega and Veron particularly were starting to manoeuvre forward Ortega is very clever we need to shackle him a little bit and they got the free kick on the edge of the box and Passarella it was lovely to see in a way <laughs> well I say lovely to see I hated it but it was lovely to see a free kick that was different unusual you know original and that's what it was, and it brought a goal. How do you think England should play the second half? Well, I said at the outset when I was talking to Alan, you must keep the tempo up. You can't let your tempo drop against this team, because in midfield they'll destroy you. The tempo has got to be kept up, and their weakness now quite clearly is the back three. They can't handle Owen's pace, and they can't handle Shearer in the air. So we can afford to knock one or two balls up, and I said to you that there's a chance for Scholes always to score because he's coming late and he times his runs absolutely perfectly. I've seen him do it quite a lot for Manchester United and he had that wonderful chance when it was flicked on. I was talking to Robbie Earl last night and he was telling me about the fact that the Jamaican coach, who's a Brazilian, was saying to him that the South American sides hate cross balls. They hate having to defend headers all the time well, against the European sides. And, and they're just not used to no, it. No, they're not used to that kind of play. But what they are good at they're used to coming through the middle on tight defences and playing short passes you know and that's what they're very good at and you've seen it again today with Zanetti and Almeida and Ortega in particular the, the, when, the, when the control's tight they're fabulous 
but of course that's not what the game's all about you've also got this incident like Shearer and, and Owen up there causing them all kinds of problems if we can get Anderton into the game a little bit more I think that's what we've got to do we've got to get him down that right side a little bit more he had a bit of a problem I think it was his contact lens dropped out that's right you know and when you get that it's a bit of a disturbance it takes a little time to get going again get down this flank get one or two balls in I'd like to see Roar under a bit of pressure I would what do you feel about the wing backs in a defensive role are they doing well, their Anderton's job well Anderton's not been getting back too much really in this game I think you know he's going to get caught between two stools but I'm not complaining about the England I think we've played really well because I've not changed my mind Argentina are a very good team and you can see it anyway mm. you can see it and the two penalties well really lightweight penalties just cancelled each other out really didn't and they and the referees you know as you say but this set up the game, you know what I mean? This set up a wonderful game. It's fantastic, this match. Yeah, it is. It is really the it's, match of the tournament so well, uh, far, isn't it? It's a long time since you've seen me stand up and cheer a goal, isn't it? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to mention it, but normally you're so quiet and reticent and you sit in the corner and don't say very much. Well, and it means tonight, such a lot to me, really. You're screaming you know? at people. Well, it, it means a lot, you know, to, for me to see England get in the last aid. It would be absolutely fantastic. Mm. And, frankly, there's a few people who are already through who will be glad to see us out. Mm. So do you think England are playing as well as they can? I think we've played as well as we can in the first half. Maintaining it now is the important thing. The South Americans, the Paraguayans, the Chileans, the Brazilians and the Argentinians have shown they can come strong in the second half. Fitness level high. We've got to match that in the second half. Really is improving as it's going along. He's got a language style. He's very deceptive. But you don't give the ball away. And he, what he does as well, he drags the other midfield players around with him. Ortega, sharp, short, sharp and it's always liable to do something. We've got to shackle them. We're doing all right so far, though. Here they come. Here's Alan Green. Isn't this the beautiful game? Pace, skill, technique, goals, wonderful atmosphere. The intensity of the occasion is almost overwhelming. It's a fabulous game of football. Now, are there any changes? I can't think there'll be any for England. Uh, Shearer has seen someone in the crowd. And he's uh, waving. Uh, Paul Ince is standing on the, the near touchline. And who's he waiting for? I don't know. I agree with Jimmy Arfield, by the way, Terry. I think England could do... Um, Anderton's had a terrific tournament, but England need a bit more from Darren Anderton in the second half. Yeah, they do. And uh, Paul Ince on the sidelines. We're not too sure what's happening here. There's one or two signals being put forward, but... Uh, now it's just because uh, there was slight confusion because Rio Ferdinand had his shirt off or his uh, sweat top off but uh, I'll just look around I think they've got everybody out there yes, yes they have and so too of Argentina uh, let's hope the referee improves his standard <laughs> made one or two um, mistakes uh, you, hey. England all in white defending the goal to the left in the second half Argentina all in blue and these are the teams quickly Seaman is the goalkeeper for England then it's Neville Adams and uh, Campbell in midfield Anderton in Beckham scores and so and the goal scores Shearer and Owen Owen was brilliant with his strike Argentina their goalkeepers Roa the defenders of Vivas Ayala and Schemelt and then in midfield we've got Almeida Zanetti Baron Simeone a little bit ahead of those four Ortega and then Balistuta and Lopez the header down by Adams reaches Beckham oh it's a clattering challenge from behind by Simeone and what happened there? Um, now, as Beckham got up, somebody swung a boot. And I'm not sure... Did you see what happened precisely? Yeah, I would saw it. Beckham was lying on the floor. It was a definite push in the back by Simeone. Beckham went down on the floor. He's lying on the floor. And then Simeone comes over to him to try and wave him away. And David uh, Beckham just lifted his right boot. And it just caught Simeone. The referee was right on top of the situation. He's gone to his pocket to produce a card. And there's all Argentinian players around at the moment. England players there. And he's produced a card for Simeone. Now, he's, he's booked Simeone. Oh, he sent Beckham off. Oh, my word. A minute gone in the second half. And this is awful for England. Absolutely awful. David Beckham has been sent off against Argentina. Well, he did raise his boot just to, to catch Simeone. But he was lying on the floor at the time. He just one of the petulant little kicks that sometimes players do the referee on top of it pulled out a red card and quite frankly that just sums up his performance he's a wretched referee he's got everything wrong so far in the game he's having a nightmare he's reducing England to 10 men now Glenn Hoddle's in the sidelines he's got to try and rearrange the side he's talking to Michael Owen it might be a case of Michael Owen just coming back a little bit 
Oh, pull, pulling David, uh, pulling Alan Shearer back. England going to be a man light in the centre of midfield. A disgraceful this season. The thing is, what really annoyed me about that, he's awarded a free kick, right? At this stage, he's got no intention of booking Simeone. And then we have the repercussions. Why Beckham raised his foot? Honestly, only David Beckham can know that. But then, as soon as the referee produced yellow for Simeone, I dreaded the thought of the action on Beckham. So England, having led 2-1, it's now 2-2. And England are down to 10 men. And they're on the attack. Lasso crosses into the penalty area towards Shearer. And it's easily caught by Roa. And I just feel like kicking the table. Really feel like kicking the table. Dear, oh dear. Oh, right. Well, I just have to deal with it, lads. 43 minutes to go. England with a free kick. And at this moment, I'm praying that that old adage, you know, that it's more difficult to play against 10 men, holds up again but I doubt it somehow. Argentina were playing too well in that first half. Why is it whenever we play Argentina, we get the worst referee in the world? I just cannot believe it. He's now ruined the game for England, but England have to get together. They have to get on with it. There's no use bleating about it. They've got a free kick now and a chance to have a go on goal. This will be a real test of character. Well, it's well over 30 yards. As Shearer comes forward, right foot, and it's high into the crowd. And, and you know, the thought that's drifting through my mind at the moment is already we're playing for penalties. I'm not saying that's what's in, what's in the England uh, player's mind, but it's in my mind. Already England have to play for penalties. I just cannot see how England will beat Argentina with 10 men in normal time or in extra time. Hope I'm wrong. Argentina on the attack. Gary Neville controls that pass very well, though. Plays it back to Seaman. Uh, they've got Michael Owen drifting back into midfield. Now, the right side of midfield. Anderton's moved inside. And it's 4-4-1, essentially, now because we've got Gary Neville back, Lasso further back on the far side, so the revised England line, now that uh, Beckham's been sent off, is Neville right back, Adams and Campbell in the middle, Lasso on the left, Owen right wing, Anderton scores infield, uh, with Ince, and of course Shearer up front. Veron up over the halfway line, Campbell comes across, Veron wins it, it's three against three here, but it's Tuta into the penalty here, shoots, takes the reflection off Adams, and Campbell clears it, Scholes tries to head it away, doesn't do so, Ortega exits the penalty here, into the penalty here, Ortega's still going, turns onto his left foot, great play, crosses behind Barristuda, Barristuda controls the ball though, flicks it back into the danger area, Neville heads it up and away, Simeone challenged by Campbell, headed back into the penalty here by Chamot, and now Adams climbs and heads further away towards the halfway line, but the pressure is on England and immediately it's going to intensify four minutes gone in the second half oh, but it's still is onside the flag straight down and he headed wide well as well as a bad referee we've got an awful linesman as well because uh, Battistuta was clearly offside no in fact he no, was he just wasn't. onside he, he thought wasn't. he was offside to be fair and just directed the header wide he possibly thought he was offside but uh, his, his real backs to the wall performance from England now a lot of character a lot of, a lot of uh, Strength of, re of resolve is needed. They've gone to a back four, four in midfield. Michael Owen on the right-hand side. Shearer up front on his own. England can still get forward. They've still got the pace of Shearer. They've still got players that can cause Argentina Owen. trouble. Owen spins away from Shamrock, running towards the penalty area. Shearer's on the far post. There's the cross towards Shearer. Important header away. Only the ends. Ends. Just takes the deflection and it spins behind for a corner to England. And Jimmy Armfield applauds. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy's I, up. Jim, have you ever seen him as animated as this uh, before? No, I haven't. I think Jimmy made a signal to try and get me on the pitch there. But uh, England are going to need players there with a lot of character. And they had that. And then they got Michael Owen down the right-hand side. That's the one thing they've got. They've got pace down this right-hand side. Argentina have got to be careful. They don't let Owen go one-on-one. -on -one. Owen's ball inside was cleared. Into his shot was deflected for a corner. Well, if England win from this position, it's arguably one of the greatest wins of all time. Last 16 of the World Cup, 2-2, England down to 10 men, this is 5 live in the BBC, England corner, Anderton whips it in, punched away by Roa, collected by Ince, just outside the penalty, steps away from Barristuda, brought down by Barristuda, and this is a good free kick position for England. Well, I wonder if Glenn Hoddle's on his feet directing the players, they must have something from the training ground on this, it would be good if they can just curl one in or have the same effect as Zanetti's equalising goal, Beckham's not here of course, he's been sent off, it's a chance for other people to take the stage take position, take the ball, take the bottle and try and get this ball on target. I'll give you some time to think about it, but do you blame Beckham? I'll ask you in a moment. I do. But it's a free kick for England and it's over 20 yards from goal. Now it is Alan Shearer territory. He's already scored tonight from the penalty. 51 minutes played. Played in, saved by Raw. Terrific free kick. 
Well, Argentina had about seven men in the wall. It's right in front of the goal. It was about 25 yards out. Alan Shearer produced a great curling free kick just past the wall to the left. And Carlos Roa got across, got both hands to it and pushed it aside for a corner. That was going in the top corner. So the signal from Darren Anderson. And England have committed four players into the Argentina penalty area, including Campbell and Adams. Here it comes from the right, right footed, high. Adams jumps, beaten in the air, and it's flicked clear. And England have to be careful here. Argentina on the counter attack. Lopez up over the halfway line. Batistuta sprinting through. Neville intercepts the pass. Great interception. Finds Campbell. Campbell a little too close for the halfway line. The way England are, down to 10 men. But he finds Anderton. Forward to Shearer. Shearer surrounded by navy blue shirts. Plays it back to Anderton. Owen peels upfield from his right wing position now. Anderton though looks for Gary Neville. Near side, over the halfway line. We've played nine minutes since half time. Perilous minutes for England. Beckham sent off. And it's 2 2 here against Argentina in Santa Chen. In a, well, it's just electrifying the game. Verón to the far side and Ortega. Ortega over the halfway line looking for Patty Studer. Campbell goes across, the pass is a little overhead. Patty Studer can't keep it in play and it's a goal kick to England. Well, different tactics have got to be applied by England now. They can't afford to push too many men forward, overcommit themselves because Ortega's got pace. Lopez, Patty Studer, they've all got pace. Veron is very good on the ball, runs very quickly with the ball. So they have good pace throughout the team. So they have to defend a little deeper. They have to make sure that they can make their clearances tell, do their jobs properly and not concentrate badly that allows players to be one-on-one -on -one because Argentina have pace they must remember though to give plenty of the ball to Michael Owen because he still has the pace on his own it's hit up field by England and looked to be a foul on Shearer not given by the Danish referee who's going to get some stick in the morning that's for sure never mind tonight and the ball is played through Lopez is offside fly quickly up for the linesman and it's a free kick to England that's the concentration level that we need there and, uh, I think it was Lopez made the run through he's quick the ball came in from Zanetti an angled ball into the heart of the England defence England just stepped up and he was about a, about a yard offside this time the linesman got it right David Seaman out of his penalty area to take this free kick right footed and drifting straight on to the right foot of Chamot midway inside the Argentinian, Argentinian half to our right collected by Veron, who strides forward with some purpose up over the halfway line slips the pass to the left but the uh, Argentine captain Simeone wasn't expecting the pass and it's out of play for a throw into England Gary Neville now operating as a right back takes a throw in to skipper Shearer Shearer does well evading Almeida but runs into another defender and the ball breaks back off Sinetti back to his goalkeeper Roa Roa out to the far side and Vivas who lays it in field to Zanetti, score of that brilliant free kick in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Now Ortega looking for Lopez. Campbell diverts it away. Scholes is in uh, and knocks it back to Saul Campbell, left of the England penalty here. The clearance up to the halfway line, but there's so many Argentinian players in the field at the moment, it seems. And Argentina have the ball back. Simeone towards Batty Stutter, but Neville is there. Careful back pass to David Seaman, and Seaman clears right footed upfield. Shearer is there but can't get the ball it's over his head and it's with Vivas at the moment at, at, from a neutral point of view as well the sending off has really disrupted the game here's Ince Ince to Shearer Shearer runs into the defender that's Ayala and it's taken away by Zanetti to the far side to Veron right of the centre circle Simeone is captain available to his left Veron doesn't need him for the moment Lopez is on the far side. Veron keeps going. Fancy shot. Shoots. Paddy Studer got a deflection on that. I think it was a deliberate deflection, but he only deflected it up over the crossbar. Well, he was shooting for about 35 yards out. Veron on his right foot, right in the middle of the goal. I'm sure David Seaman would have had it covered. It was quite low. Just caught Paddy Studer on the back of the thigh, I think, and the ball ended up going over very harmlessly for a goal kick. But Michael Owen, I'd like to see him further forward if we could, but I think he's been forced now to play this right wing role. But good to see him get the ball. Shamot has come over to take him, to mark him. He's got a one-for-one -one job on Michael Owen, and I'm sure that uh, Ayala and uh, Viva should be pleased to see the back of Michael Owen through the heart of that uh, England attack. You know, by the way, that we now have a record number of sendings off for a World Cup Finals. We've beaten the previous record, and it's a shame that David Beckham is one of those names. Well, he did raise his foot, but at the end of the day, it was, he was lying prostrate on the floor, raised, just raised his heel up as you do, just caught the player, and never any, any, any real hard play and it's never going to be real dangerous play a real elbow job or anything like that or a punch and the referee was there and produced a red card and it was quite incredulous Scholes 
to Anderton, back to Adams, and now Campbell, oh, that was, oh, that put Campbell into terrible trouble, and he's very fortunate to get away with it. That is Suda was almost through. Lasso, now at left back to Anderton in the center of midfield. Lasso on the far side to Scholes. Scholes, two Argentine players around him, is fouled by one of them. That's Almeida, and England are doing quite well at the moment. They just need to steady things down, but there's an awful long way to go. An awful long way to go. 33 minutes left of normal time. It's England 2, Argentina 2. From the free kick, Anderton on the far side. England left, hits a cross field, wasted. Straight to Chamot. Forward now to Veron. Veron looks, he sees Lopez down the right flank. It's a great ball. Lopez takes it on his chest. Instant control, edge of the penalty here. Around Campbell, crosses low. Simple save for Seaman because there was no one else there for yeah. Argentina. For once, Badastuda couldn't get on the end of a, of a cross and uh, the ball was hit long to Lopez. Badastuda had come short and couldn't make the ground up. Lopez just went past Campbell in a very wide position and just trickled the ball across the area. He's been guilty of some poor crosses. He's gone in some great positions, but he's, he's uh, not delivered that final pass. And uh, thankfully for England, he hasn't. Adams hits it right-footed upfield. Shearer doesn't try to jump, and it's headed away from his uh, back, so to speak, by Ayala to Almeida. On the halfway line, good ball to Ortega. Ortega spins, running at the England defence, into the penalty area. Lopez shoots left-footed, past Seaman, but past the post. There must have been a touch, because it's a corner. Well, once again, he's Ortega just in behind the England midfield. Riggle got the ball to Lopez. He shot on his left foot. I think it was Tony Adams who actually got the block. Could have been Darren Anderton. The ball just squirming past David Seaman's right-hand post. But uh, it, it, was miss. it was Lasso. Definitely off Lasso's left foot. But it was very close. 59 minutes played. Five live in the BBC from Centre Chen. 2-2. Two, two. There's the Argentine corner. Over hit. Zanetti's on the far side. He'll keep it in play. Zanetti of Inter Milan. Back it goes to Almeida of Lazio. None of these players play in Argentina anymore. They are very good players. That's why they don't play in Argentina. Veron chips it forward. The header on by Zanetti. Just wide. Great run. And who was marking him? It was Michael Owen was marking Zanetti. He made the run from the right wing. Veron had the ball just about on the halfway line to the left-hand side of the pitch. Saw the run by Zanetti. And Michael Owen was tracking him. He'd have to mark him up from the corner as well. And he tracked him and did enough to put him off because the header from about 20 yards sailed wide. I tell you this, if Michael Owen's World Cup and England's World Cup ends tonight, um, there's one saving grace. Michael Owen will star in future World Cups for England. There's no question about that. If uh, you weren't listening to the first half and didn't hear our description of uh, Michael Owen's goal, that for a time put England 2-1 in front, well, boy, you missed something special. Adams hits the clearance up towards Owen on the halfway line. Headed away by Chamot, only to Ince, on to Scholes. Scholes can't quite control it, and Argentina have it back. Zanetti to Simeone, Simeone to Baron, on to Ortega. Argentina increasingly fluid, important challenge by Ince. Diverts it away, and if it runs out of play on the far side, it might be an England thrown, but it won't, because it's just kept in. England 2, Argentina 2. Beckham sent off after one minute of the second half. And England really up against it now, playing 4-4-1, changing the formation. Veron on the far side, running at Lasso, infield of Lasso, stabs it to Lopez, Lopez in the penalty area, pulls it back and it's cleared! Hacked away by Alan Shearer inside the six-yard box. First it was Owen making an important challenge, now it's the skipper Shearer. They are working hard. There's more work to be done though. Chamot to the far side, infield to Ortega. And England being pegged back now. Simeone, the captain of Argentina, to Zanetti. Zanetti to Lopez, right of the penalty area. Lasso's close, not close enough as Lopez gets in the cross, but it's behind for a goal kick. Well, a great play by Alan Shearer. He's just changed places with Michael Owen. Michael Owen's the one lone striker up front. Alan Shearer coming to the right-hand side of the, of the uh, midfield. England playing 4-4-1. With that time, Lopez got beyond... Graham Lasso on the far side whipped a great cross in beat David uh, Seaman and there was Alan Shearer coming back to Mark Vivas to hack about two yard, to hack clear about two yards off England's line so Alan Shearer the right hand side Owen up front on his own by, by the way talking about hacking Vivas hacked Shearer anyway from behind hacked him into the calf muscle of his left leg 61 minutes played 61 dramatic minutes in centre chain it's England 2 Argentina 2 England with 10 men Beckham sent off Neville is Manchester United calling to take a free kick. It's 15 yards inside Argentina's half. Near side, England right. 
Shearer's in the penalty area. All his goals are close. Anderton makes a late run. It's deep the free kick for Shearer. Out comes the goalkeeper, Roa. Palms it away, out of play for a throw-in. One long free kick into the box, and there's two Argentinian players and the goalkeeper going for the ball. The goalkeeper is palming it away for an England throw on the far side. There's not much else that uh, Gary Neville could do, not much else England can do. Just pump a long ball into the box. Lasso from the throw-in. Skulls close by. Skulls collects. Why didn't Paul school score that goal when it was 2-1? England would have been 3-1 up. He had a great chance and missed it. England have won a corner on the far side. As uh, the attempted cross by Lasso took a deflection. And now who do they commit forward? Gary Neville is actually saying to Tony Adams, you get forward, son. And Saul Campbell's up there. Paul Instrott's back to help out Gary Neville. Lasso's hanging back as well. Now England have four players inside the penalty area and Skull's lurking in the edge of the D. And to take the corner. From the left, he's going to hit it right-footed. 62 minutes played. 2-2. Anderton's corner. There it goes towards the near post. Headed away by Chamot. Collected by Lasso. Anderton. Lasso again. Left foot across. It's oh, bouncing across the penalty here. Neither Campbell nor Owen can collect. And here come Argentina on the counter-attack. Batty Stuta to Lopez on the far side. England need to get a challenge in here. No. Here's Chamot. Forward into the penalty area. Uh, Batty Stuta slips. Chamot is still there. It's inside the box. They're trying to tee up the shot for someone. And they don't. And Neville clears. Well, heartbreak moment then for England because they were queuing up in that box to put the ball in the back of the net. England then got back in numbers and in the end the ball squirming free to Gary Neville to hack clear. But uh, it's from England's corner that England look vulnerable. They commit men forward. They're trying to deliver good balls into the box when one little touch could result in a goal. It's very bold, I know, but at the same time they've got to be aware of the Argentinian break because when they break, they break with fierce pace. Nearly 64 minutes played here in saint Etienne. England 2 Argentina two. I think the soul's got problems on the far side. Adams and Campbell were both indicating and uh, England may have to make a substitution. We'll see. The soul perhaps struggling a little bit. Neville with a throw in down the near side right on the halfway line and Neville waits for someone to be remotely close. Only Shearer down this right touch line it's thrown towards Shearer and stabbed out of play by Simeone the captain of Argentina and England have made 50 yards progress well it's a great long throw that uh, Gary Neville's got and uh, Alan Shearer makes the run and there's not much you can do as a defender and you have to get there in front of the England striker as the Argentinians do and put it out for a throw and now is a chance Gary Neville just level with the, the edge of the penalty area just to get a ball into the box no, Gar no England uh, big man has gone forward just Shearer Gary Neville stretches throws into the penalty area Roa catches and then drops back and uh, there was no there was no foul there by Scholes and the Argentine defenders making far too much of that and then Roa throws out to the far side and here's an Argentina counter-attack up to the halfway line they're on on the far side couple of yards in from the right and forward to Ortega back to Verón Skull stretches in stretches instaverts the ball away but doesn't find Owen his Liverpool colleague is back with Vivas and taken up now by Almeida with 25 minutes left for play and Crespo I think is going to come on in fact there may be a double substitution and I don't like the other one I can tell you because he's brilliant Gallardo Crespo and Gallardo are about to come on for Argentina well I think just as England have changed their formation I think Argentina will try and change as well they have the extra man they're going to try and make it count England have got one striker so Argentina, Argentina could possibly just play with two defenders and, and uh, push an extra man up and uh, into that midfield section that's where England have got a man short well it's a measure of Gallardo's uh, ability I doubt if there's another uh, country involved in this World Cup that wouldn't have him in their starting lineup. 2-2 Argentina on the attack. Ortega tries to play it through to Lopez. It's diverted away only to Simeone. Pressure on England. Simeone tackled by Anderton and the ball breaks to Shearer. But look where Shearer is. Right back position. Only Owen is upfield. It's lashed towards Michael Owen but collected by Argentina. Run forward by Vivas. And then he gives a careless pass away to Adams. Adams is looking upfield. There's no one to play it to. It goes to Owen sideways. And now Scholes and Lasso on the far side. Uh, if Lasso had problems, he seems to have run them off. We've played 66 minutes. It's still England 2, Argentina 2. David Beckham sent off in the first minute of the second half after putting a foot up on Simeone. Here's Simeone coming forward now, approaching the England penalty chair. Slides it right footed towards Ortega. Instant for the challenge. Scholes in again. And Scholes now has got room to run it clear. And suddenly there are three England attackers against five. Argentine defenders Owen on the far side Owen back to Lasso. England just need to be patient they've got to be patient they've got no other option 
Le Sode Owen again. The defender stretches and diverts it out of play for a throw, and that was Vigas. Yes, and just got to slow the tempo of the, play, of the, of the pace of the game down. Just slow it down, keep making your passes, waste a few seconds. It just needs Michael Owen, I think, we're one on one versus an Argentinian defender. I think they might have a chance. That's a sort of opportunity that we're looking for but uh, they just got to keep the pace slow because when Argentina break they're very very quick very good players and it'll be interesting to see what sort of formation now Passarella will employ well Crespo's going to come on for Balistuda which is uh, surprising enough here's Ortega though Lopez ahead of him he'd run the offside Ortega cleverly keeps the ball looking for Balistuda threads the pass through only through to David Seaman I don't know who Gallardo's coming on for but we've reached the midway point of the second half of the most intensely dramatic occasion here in Centre Chen. It's 2 2, and here's Mike Ingham. Well, just when they thought they'd seen the back of one Diego, Diego Simeone in the clash with David Beckham, but what on earth was David Beckham thinking of? I remember coming to France last summer and he got two yellow cards in the tournoi, and uh, Glenn Hoddle really had a long talk to David Beckham and he certainly kicked out at uh, Simeone to become the first England player since Ray Wilkins in the 1986 World Cup to be sent off. Now, Batistuta, and this will lift England to a certain extent, I think, is making way for Crespo of Parma, and uh, also coming off is Lopez, so two new stri strikers in a sense, or well, Gallardo can play anywhere, really. He's the one player now on the pitch who's actually based in Argentina with River Plate. He's got a great future ahead of him. He's known as the doll because he looks so young. And uh, those changes are made, but Argentina with a man advantage. It's 2-2. And Beckham only the fifth England player to be sent off in a game of international football. The ball is with Argentina. And Gallardo gets his first touch. Ortega lifts the ball over Campbell. And the referee immediately gives the free kick. And we're wondering whether England, Gareth Southgate, I think, is going to come on in a moment. We were thinking that... Uh, Graham Lasso had a problem over on the far side but now Argentina with this free kick and remember they scored their equaliser right on half time with a beautifully worked free kick eventually the goal scorer left footed was Zanetti Gallardo who's just come on slips as he takes the free kick and in the end Ortega doesn't control it Ince gets his head to it the ball is still on the edge of the England area and in the end it's Shearer who thrashes the ball back to the halfway line and Veron just steers it back into the defence it goes, inside the centre circle, and Almeida gives Gallardo another touch. Here he comes, a little shimmy from number 20, who's just come on to give England lots more to think about. The ball with Diego Simeone, the man brought down allegedly by David Seaman for the penalty, of course, after five minutes, so he's been very involved in this game. Now Scholes has a chance to try and clear for England, but he's caught in possession. England need to hold it better than that. Here come Argentina again. Gallardo into Veron. Back again to Gallardo. The new man goes round Adams. Still Gallardo. Can't get the shot and it's blocked by Campbell. England being pegged back inside their own half here. Playing very deep. Campbell played into trouble. Then the back pass to Seaman. Eventually cleared. But here's the problem now for England. There's nobody at all downfield. They've had to reshape the side. And the ball once more is collected by Veron in midfield. Here comes Veron, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow from Argentina, Ortega. Good challenge on Ortega by Gary Neville, now Ince, and there's nobody for Ince to give it to at the moment. Ince holds and patiently waits for support, then eventually finds his Liverpool teammate Owen, and he's caught late as uh, Paul Ince by Almeida, and now Gareth Southgate, who played in the first game against Tunisia, then aggravated an old injury. Southgate is going to come on for Lasso. Maybe Campbell is the man to go across to the left-hand side and Southgate to go into Campbell's position. Terry Butcher. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, Gareth Southgate coming on into the left centre-back role. Sol Campbell's gone on to the left-hand side as well. The uh, Argentinians have pushed Crespo and Ortega up front. And little Gallardo, he's the one that's in that uh, Ortega role just behind the strikers. Similar to what Paul Scholes does for England when they have 11 players on the pitch less than 20 minutes to go England 2 Argentina 2 that was the half time score England down to 10 men you're listening to 5 live and here goes Campbell down the England left following the free kick flakes the ball by the corner flag works it in with his right foot it's a bit heavy Anderton controls it superbly his shot is though blocked and here's the danger now for Argentina potentially on the counter attack as they bring the ball forward through Gallardo Ortega just forced back inside his own half 
Then he releases the ball and finds Simeone. Lovely snatch in midfield by Ince, but again, there are no options for Ince. So England play the ball back and Southgate gets his first touch. 18 minutes to go as England send a long one down the far side and Scholes, if only Scholes, could have put away that chance at 2-1 to England. What a difference that might have made. It's 2-2. Argentina with 11 men on the field. David Beckham of Manchester United sent off. The last player to be sent off for England was also a Manchester United player, Wilkins, as now Argentina's Crespo is caught offside. England pushing up well there, and they have a free kick. Well, there's lots of activity on the England bench. I'm not too sure if there's a lot of options he can do at the moment. The lads are hanging on well. They're, they're, they're defending well, holding the line, concentrating well at the back, and just getting forward. We, when we do win the ball, there's no one to give it to up front. We like little Owen up front to try and have a go at the Argentinian defenders, but at the moment he's been forced back to right wing. It was tough enough for England with 11 men on the field. David Beckham will be mortified that he's left his side here, handicapped, a man short. The ball is with Argentina once more in midfield. Almeida plays it to the far side. Argentina now building again in midfield. It's Gallardo. Ince is trying to get a oh, great challenge from Ince. And Anderton's there to feed off the challenge. He mustn't overrun this, Anderton. Eventually he does too much, but he's caught behind by Almeida. Yellow card to Almeida. Free kick to England. Good play by Darren Anderton just in front. He's the one that's sitting in the central midfield role for England with uh, with Paul Ince. He's got Gallardo just in behind those two players and he's a, a good little player at finding space in Argentina with Veron in particular picking them out. Causing a few problems, but England defending well. Paul Ince is having a great game, not in the heart of that, of that midfield. And Darren Anderton's doing a very good job in there. On this hot, sultry night, England are taking on one of the best teams in the world. Possible World Cup winners with only 10 men. It's 2-2. Ince with the free kick. Good climb by Alan Shearer, but he drops the ball straight into the arms of the Argentinian keeper, who throws to this near side. And Diego Simeone, the Argentinian captain into midfield as ever they look for Veron lots of quick work here and they've got this man available in midfield and England are struggling a bit they're a bit short Veron Veron great challenge coming in from Gary Neville down this near side and the back pass is on from Gary Neville to Seaman and Seaman clears it's up in the air Shearer all on his own inside the Argentinian half heads it on to Owen can Owen take this forward for England here goes Michael Owen Michael Owen in the area oh and he's put it under, over the bar and into the crowd he never really in the end had the ball under his control he showed electric pace he had two or three defenders bearing down on him. In the end, he's had to snatch at the shot and he's lifted it wide. But there's the danger for Argentina once more from Michael Owen. And he was caught very late as well, I think it was, by Ayala as well as he went for his shot. That was the one opportunity England needed. A good header by Shearer. Good pace by Owen. Taking on Ayala. Went past him. And if, if that ball had been on his right foot, that would have been 3 2. Unfortunately, it was on his left foot. He took a bit of a hammering in the process. He's up and about. England hanging on. 15 minutes to go. You're listening to Five Live. 2 2 here in San Etienne between England and Argentina. Titanic battle. The ball with Gallardo and Ortega, the two little live wires in midfield, square from Ortega to Veron, who's got a vicious shot, but this time he just holds, looking to play a 1-2, ball still in the centre of Argentina's midfield, they're playing with great patience and composure here, and then in the end, well, the, the, the attacker there was looking for a free kick against Gareth Southgate, there was no contact, referee very happy with that at least, and a, a goal kick for David Seaman to take away to our left. Well, one chance is all England need, and unfortunately that was on Michael Owen's left foot, but it just proves the fact that he's got to play through the middle, and Alan Shearer, unaccustomed as he is, has got to play in this wide right position. He's got to hold the wide right position of a midfield four. Let Owen be up there, and let Owen try and get one sniff at a goal. You feel if he does have one sniff, he'll put it away. Siemens kick wasn't the greatest and it puts Argentina back in possession once more Gallardo goes past the challenge from Ince and Argentina building again with real menace Veron into Ortega a good challenge from Tony Adams England have to play it carefully at the back there's nothing on really for Ince he gives it back to his goalkeeper Seaman who gets a long clearance back inside the Argentina half where the sweeper Ayala is waiting for the ball into the last 15 minutes of normal time we go of course the possibility of extra time which will be really punishing for England with only 10 men on the field the ball with Gallardo once more into Ortega Ortega forced back a couple of yards and he twists and turns and plays it neatly in towards Crespo and here goes Ortega Campbell's gone down the ball is still in the area in comes Southgate to take it away and that looked like a dive from Ortega and England clear to the far side 
and uh, Vivas can't keep it in although he's going to settle for the throw -in. clever play by Argentina just getting the ball in and around the midfield section about 25 yards out threatening little balls to feet and the defenders can't dive in because they just turn Ortega and Gallardo get the ball to the feet and turn quickly lovely ball from Beron to Gallardo the shot is charged down by Adams the flag went up anyway over on the far side and at the moment Alan Shearer this tells you the story really is playing at right back on this near side we've got 30 minutes to go of normal time here in San Etienne. It's hardly been a normal game. England 2, Argentina 2 on 5 Live. Gallardo, who's been very involved since he came on, he's had a lot of the ball. In it goes to Crespo. Crespo back again to Zanetti. Little shuffle now from Veron. Ball into Shamo inside the area. Up in the air it goes from him. In goes Shamo again. Angle is very wide, gets it in, takes a deflection. Argentina appeal for handball. Siemens there. And uh, Ortega saying to the referee, that should have been a penalty. Referee says play on. Well, that's one of those ones we've seen them given in the World Cup so far. One against uh, Chile. It was when Italy got, uh, grabbed the last minute equaliser. That one, the ball striking Tony Adams' hand. He went up to really shield his face from the ball. The ball struck his hand. We've seen them given. On this occasion, the referee for once in this match got it right. But the referee who gave that penalty was then sent home, I think, after that Italy-Chile game. He should send this one home as well. <laughs> now it's Gallardo skipping around the challenges and then shovels the shot right-footed and into the crowd. That's fine for Glenn Hoddle in England with about 12 minutes to go. And we're going to have another change here. England are going to be bring on another change and what have they got in mind for us now here we are going to have Paul Scholes coming off and Paul Merson is coming on for his first bit of action in these World Cup finals a Paul replaces a Paul very experienced campaigner Paul Merson comes on to try and run from midfield in place of Paul Scholes well it's not bad from Glenn Hoddle Paul Scholes is struggling a little bit he's got through a lot of work he's not the quickest of people ever what, 10 or 15 yards and I think the chances for Paul Merson to come on now get the, if he can get the ball get it just run it out take the, the heat off England defence but England holding firm at the moment fresh legs for England but so much work to do at the back as the ball is lifted in from Simeone Crespo doesn't control it first time across comes Campbell and uh, that ball's gone out of play I think and the linesman signals over on the far side that England can take a goal kick. Well, England fortunate there because great movement by Argentina, great movement by Crespo. He actually broke the, the offside trap and the ball just too far ahead of him to try and get the ball under control to try and have a go at David Seaman. He just almost prevented it from going for a goal kick far on the right-hand side, but uh, it didn't and uh, David Seaman took the goal kick. Terry, why do you think it was Merson and not McManaman who came on for Scholes? Oh, I'm not too sure. I think it's, it's a toss-up between the two, to be honest, but... Uh, now Owen, Owen's gone past the first man and uh, he was caught from behind, was he? By the second, and uh, if it was Almeida, he's already got a yellow card. Owen, first of all, up against Vivas. Vivas couldn't, it was Vivas who caught him. England free kick, 25 yards away from the Argentinian goal. A set piece, Argentina right on half time, produced a wonderful set piece to equalise. It's still 2-2. Two -two. England, you sense, if they are going to snatch a dramatic historic victory here have to do something pretty special from set pieces and can the captain drive one in here Alan Shearer stands in between Paul Ince and Darren Anderton he's only a couple of yards away from the ball at the moment Alan Shearer there's no Beckham to take it Shearer shot deflected that'll be a corner far side Give me that own goal Tommy Hutchinson scored in the cup final that was very similar to that Shearer's free kick stopped he hit it he hit Veron on the back went right across the face of the goal went about three or four yards wide to the right hand side but uh, that was almost on target and at least Shearer with his free kicks looks dangerous we've England now got a corner Darren Anderton with an England corner just under ten minutes to go he raises the ball over on the far side on the left hand side Adams drops Sutton back down inside the area Campbell's at the far post in it goes from Anderton oh he's got in a goal no he's disallowed it he went in, I think, off Shearer. Saul Campbell is celebrating. There are three players off the pitch at the moment. They have to get back on again. There are three players off the pitch as Argentina break down field. Gary Neville comes in with a challenge. There is chaos here as Ortega plays the ball through to Crespo. And the, the players are still going to the referee. The corner kick was swung in by Anderton. There were England players off the pitch celebrating what they thought was a goal from Alan Shearer. Let's watch this one again as it came in. Shearer got up above the goalkeeper. What on earth was wrong with that? 
Campbell perhaps got the final touch, did he, Terry? But yep. the goal has been disallowed. Well, Campbell and two or three other England players run over to the bench. They thought the referee had given the goal. The referee appointed for a free kick. Argentina took the free kick quickly and came up and almost got a goal. But once again, this referee is an absolute fool. Shearer has jumped with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper has tried to punch the ball. It's virtually hit Sol Campbell on the head and bounced into an empty net. What Sol a disgraceful decision again. Sol Campbell thought he'd scored the most important goal of his life, his first goal it would have been for England. Shearer unsettling the Argentinian defence. The corner kick taken by Campbell's Tottenham teammate, Darren Anderton. England celebrating what they thought might have been a winning goal and a place in the quarter-final. Goal disallowed by the referee who has sent off David Beckham in this game and reduced England to ten men. Now England with a free kick to be taken by Darren Anderton. In it goes. Campbell's there again with a header. This time it's an easy save for the goalkeeper. Good free kick from Anderton. Found Campbell, but it was about 15 yards out at an angle. Good downward header. Unfortunately, straight at the goalkeeper. England got to regroup. Hold on. They're, they've got. Well, they've had one chance from Owen. They had another chance in the corner. England are still creating chances with 10 men. What a game. A goal now, surely, and it will be all over. And England thought it was all over. And never mind some people being on the pitch, players were off the pitch when they thought they'd scored the goal and they were nearly caught at the other end by an Argentina break. Now Argentina building themselves on the edge of the England area. England have got everybody back apart from Shearer. In comes Paul Merson to take control, fires it loosely. Oh, and it's missed on the halfway line by Ayala, but Merson has to hold possession better than that. Wasted possession, giving Argentina the chance to build once more in midfield. England two, Argentina two. Whatever way it goes this game now, it's been absolutely unforgettable. Ince, back to Campbell, stabbed by Campbell, looking for Shearer, headed away from him by Vivas, but Owen blasts the ball straight back into the Argentina midfield. And uh, they are denied the space by Campbell. They set off again from the centre circle. Gallardo looking for a 1-2, Ortega back again to Gallardo. They are the danger men now down there. The ball is with Simeone, he's got a player on the outside making himself available. He just plays it short and Argentina patiently try and work an opening from midfield. It's played in by Ortega, flag's gone up for offside, Crespo's missed it anyway and a free kick to England. I tell you what, that flag went up very, very late because a good ball in, I think he might have been just onside. I think it was uh, Merson on the far side that was playing him on. The ball over Crespo's head, met it on the volley. David Seaman had come racing off his goal, did very well to block the shot. It went behind, would have gone behind for a goal kick, but uh, the linesman just very sharp, very late with his flag. It possibly wasn't offside, but a bit of a let off. Six minutes to go in Saint Etienne. You're listening to Five Live. Monumental stuff it's been here in Saint Etienne. All the goals in the first half. One minute into the second half, as England try and settle down and get some sort of control, they lose their main playmaker, David Beckham, sent off. Only the fifth man in history to be sent off the field playing for England. Alan Mullery, Alan Ball, Trevor Cherry against Argentina, and Ray Wilkins, the others. It's an England free kick near side. This is the England right. Five minutes to go. Adams and Campbell both enter the Argentina penalty area. Now, can Darren Anderton take this free kick accurately? In it goes, pinpointed towards Shearer. He can't control the header. It glances off an... No, I thought it glanced off an Argentina play to the far side. That surely should have been an England throw-in. But the referee has given it to Argentina, and they're allowed to take it as well from a much more advanced position. Veron. The commander in midfield, into Gallardo. Argentina with this typical slow approach, and then suddenly they work it into somebody like Gallardo, who can jet forward. Less than five minutes to go. 2-2, two -two, and the referee actually gets in the way of Simeone's intended ball to Almeida. And Gary Neville gets a challenge in on Ortega, but Ortega still has the balance to come back, and Anderton in the end knocks him over. And Argentina, 30 yards or so away from David Seaman's goal with four minutes to go. Extra time, a possibility. Have a free kick. Unless Argentina can conjure up a magical free kick like the one at the end of the first half. This time they elect for safety first and possession. Simeone into Veron, who's unmarked at the moment in midfield. There's the shot from Veron, and that skids a good five yards wide of Seaman's goal. And a goal kick to England. Well, all 
nine outfield players from England were behind the ball then Veron shooting from about 30 yards we don't mind that because it's going to take some shot to beat David Seaman from there a lot of players in front of David Seaman of course but that shot never ever going to trouble the English goalkeeper but uh, England got to hang on now make sure they get the right things and Ken Hoddle on his feet again issuing instructions and Shearer and Owen changing Owen's gone right through the middle again Shearer coming to the right hand side great support from England at the moment they're singing the great escape song can England escape from this with 10 men 2-2 two -two, they're holding one of the best teams in the world Anderton too tight inside the centre circle Anderton it breaks down Gary Neville comes in with the challenge but again England haven't got it away very far it's Gallardo there's the shot from Gallardo and again it's a little nearer the target that time but Seaman was happy with that and may I remind you of course with about two minutes to go here that if we do go into extra time we will have in operation the golden goal if there's a goal in extra time that will decide the contest the way it did for Laurent Blanc and France against Paraguay just a few days ago. Goal kick to David Seaman and England. Shearer down this near side. Can't get it forward. It's with Veron once more. Couple of minutes left in normal time in St Etienne as Sol Campbell tries to intercept for England. Ball comes back again to Simeone, the Argentinian captain. Now Argentina again with Gallardo. They've got this extra man and it's Zanetti now down the right-hand side, coming in field and feeding Almeida. Almeida, as England try to deny Argentina the space and the room, but Southgate doesn't get it away. Lovely turn from Almeida! And then in the end, Gary Neville comes across quickly and with his left foot, hits it as far as he possibly can. Two minutes left, 2-2. Two -two. They're so good in and around the box. Lovely balls by Gallardo, Ortega. England have got to be on their toes and very sharp and concentrated. Here they come. Argentina in the area, not controlled by Crespo. But it's still in play by the corner flag down the near side with Chamot, the defender. Chamot faced by Alan Shearer. Chamot looking to try and win a corner. Don't think he made it. That's a throw in, is it? Or is it a corner? A cross comes as they get themselves in the area. The referee has made no kind of signal at all. He's given the corner to Gallardo, a minute and a half to go Argentina fans behind David Seaman's goal jumping up and down with their flags and their scars but it's 2-2 and here comes the corner and Seaman gets both hands to the ball but there's nobody in a position to take it throws it downfield in the end to Michael Owen Owen doesn't take it cleanly first time and he can't go all the way from here the angle is very acute for him and in the end he just couldn't get his legs going there Owen has to settle for the throw in and England with one minute to go look for a little calm as Glenn Hoddle steps out and speaks to Paul Ince and tries to look as calm as he can possibly be down there and Hoddle talks to Tony Adams his great buccaneer at the back playing in his first and last World Cup Tony Adams doesn't want to go home tomorrow as Gary Neville's throw is headed on by Shearer it's tucked away to the far side by Argentina but Owen will get there Owen three minutes there will be of added time here we're just told there's Veron now for Argentina on a counter-attack there will be three minutes of added time it's 2-2 England look for offside against Ortega goes past Campbell but uh, the ball falls kindly for Seaman six yards out well Tony Adams having the right go at the lines and then he was definitely off uh, offside Ortega was the man just got the wrong side of Saul Campbell got goal side of him I thought he was offside Tony Adams letting the Lines will know that he should have stuck his flag up. England now still pushed Shearer up front, still pushed Owen up front. He might just launch this ball long in the last minute of the, of the match. Exactly 45 minutes played in the second half and the referee will now play an additional three minutes at the end of these 90 minutes. And uh, if nothing happens, we will have extra time, 15 minutes each way. And if there's a goal in extra time, that will decide the game. And just to repeat, if you haven't been with us all evening, England handicapped, having had David Beckham sent off the field. Argentina enjoying the possession once more with Veron and now Gallardo. Every single England player, all ten of them now, back inside their own half as Argentina try and probe an opening. Batistuta is now off the field, having been replaced. It's Ortega into the area. Taking responsibility was Adams and now Merson, his former Arsenal teammate running strongly down that far side there's Owen downfield and Merson tumbles over and the moment is lost the moment is lost and now the linesman over on that far side has given Argentina for some reason a throw in now, I'm not too sure if that was a throw in he just slipped at the wrong moment Paul Merson was running the ball away Owen had made a run to the left wing couldn't get him to uh, the, the ball to him he slipped 
And I thought that was an England throw, but it's an Argentinian one. About another minute and a half of added time to go. Veron again to Gallardo. Ince and Southgate trying to get it away. Desperation here for England at times. Southgate showing good balance and then, well, that's all he could do really under the circumstances. Firmly with the left foot. Off an Argentinian. Veron finds touch, so that will be an England throw in. As the replacement ball comes out quickly, England need to calm down and really now they need to have a break in this game. They need Glenn Hoddle perhaps to come on and inspire them down there with John Gorman. We've played, I reckon, about two minutes of added time. Another minute to go. England two, Argentina two. All the goals in the first half. England leading 2-1 at one stage, having come from behind. But the most disastrous start to the second half with David Beckham being sent off. Ashira tangles with Simeone and the linesman signals Argentina free kick. Into the defence it goes. The sweeper, Ayala, who really has more time now because England, with this one man short, have had to sacrifice one of their forward players. Here they come, Argentina. Ortega at 2-2. Hardly any time to go at the end of 90 minutes. Gallardo. England are funneling back, filling the edge of their area. As the ball goes in, looking for Crespo, who's made no impact at all yet since he came on for Batistuta. And that really ought to be it, I think. That's about three minutes of added time played. Kim Nielsen, the referee, hasn't looked at his watch yet. David Seaman is running to the far side to get the ball so that he can take a goal kick for England. And England shortly, when the whistle goes, at least can get some kind of G up, some kind of encouragement, some new thoughts from John Gorman, uh, Glenn Hoddle and Ray Clements. David Seaman with a goal kick. I think that should be just about it. He's just going to launch this one upfield. Shearer's there. Owens over this side. England just want to get the ball into the Argentinian half and just kill this game if they can. An absolute epic of a World Cup game. All sorts of controversy. Sol Campbell denied a goal which might have won the game for England. As the whistle goes at the end of 93 minutes, it means that we will have another 30 minutes. But, of course, the game will stop as soon as somebody scores as Glenn Hoddle and uh, all the England physios and doctors come on to try and treat tired muscles down there. England will defend the goal to our right. And remember, it's not just extra time. The golden goal comes into operation. It was the golden goal that sent France through to a quarter-final meeting with Italy on Friday, courtesy of Laurent Blanc's shot. Can England find a third goal? We're underway. Ten men, all in white, against the 11 men of Argentina. Uh, Shearer thinks he's fouled immediately by Chamot, but the referee, who's had a stunning game, has named Kim Milton Nielsen. Remember that name? He will go down in folklore in English football history. Well, he doesn't give a free kick. And Argentina come forward on the attack, and then uh, there's no foul given for Shearer's challenge. Adams showing incredible determination just at the end of that half uh, that extra time interval uh, we've got a foul now uh, on Michael Owen near side and we've got a, an Argentina substitution right at the start of extra time Bertie is going to come off and who's coming off Simeone that's interesting uh, why did they start why did he start extra time like that with Simeone and not bring Bertie on then oh, no, perhaps he had a look at the way England have lined up looked at uh, one or two things and it's now taken off his captain, his captain giving his armband to, to Burton, which is who will have the responsibility of being the Argentinian captain, but uh, a blatant foul by Vivas on, on Michael Owen. They'll have to watch him very carefully. I'm sure that uh, Pasabella will say, just mark Owen out of the game if you can and just keep passing the ball. Merson's free kick, high into the penalty here. Shearer jumps into done, peels for handball, and they look to the linesman, and the linesman doesn't give it. Neither does the referee, and it's thrown away by Roll to the far side. And Shearer looks completely out in his feet as so many of these England players must be. Argentina have the ball, midway inside, England's half. It's with Ortega to Gallardo, well, towards Gallardo, intercepted by Campbell, who's been magnificent throughout. Campbell finds Merson, up over the halfway line, Paul Merson. Two defenders close him down. Merson retreats, plays it back to Anderson. Anderson must make a mistake here. He has done, and here's Crespo, pushing the penalty, a poor pass towards Gallardo. Knocked back by Gary Neville and cleared by Seaman up towards the halfway line. Where Shearer and Owen are now, it's as if we're playing 4-3-2 now. Here's uh, Gallardo again, or Ortega, just outside the penalty area. Number 10 in his back. To uh, another 
Argentine attacker into the penalty here. Zanetti gets the cross. Was it deflected? It was. It flicked uh, over the goal, courtesy of an England deflection. I think it was Darren Anderton. And it's going to be a corner kick. Now, we've just seen a replay of that incident involving Shearer when he appealed for handball. And I thought Shamot on the replay. We didn't see it live, but Shamot definitely handled the ball. More controversy. Two minutes of extra time have been played. Corner to Argentina. Gallardo takes it from the right. Head high, right foot, and the header is up and over. And they're appealing for another corner, but they're not going to get it. It was Ayala up from defence. Well, a good corner comes swung in from the right-hand side by Gallardo, and uh, Ayala got up above. I think it was uh, Tony Adams, as it was, and Sol Campbell, and but he couldn't direct his head. It was about six feet over the bar, four to six feet over the bar, but... Uh, they've just got to be careful I mean I wouldn't expect England to get done on corners like that or set plays I wouldn't mind Argentina swinging balls into the box England defenders should deal with those all day can England last 30 minutes and take it to penalties penalties have been so costly to England we all know, we don't need to repeat when they've happened we know don't we we feel it but they're defending now England as Argentina run at them Gallardo on to Ortego edge of the England penalty area right side Southgate close by uh, Ortega picks up the inside then the outside crosses and Campbell knocks it behind for it's on, it's a corner it is indeed a corner good defending by Sol Campbell I mean uh, Ortega twisted and turned I think, it was, I think it was Tony Adams and then whipped the ball in but uh, Sol Campbell able to get in there it's Gareth Southgate he just turned and he just uh, Sol Campbell clearing the danger but uh, poor delivery but Ortega did ever so well to wriggle into that position Gallardo to kick the corner again for Argentina into the fourth minute of extra time there it goes high headed away by Gareth Southgate to the far side we're going to get David Batty very shortly uh, a substitution that uh, Terry Butcher I've got to say anticipated Darren Anderton looks out in his feet as well and maybe that's where England just needs you know, a, a stopping player in front of the defence and Batty can do that job we know that Gallardo again, one of the Argentine substitutes, plays it forward, Merson intercepts, well done Paul Merson, he's got to run towards the halfway line, he's all on his own, he's got no support at the moment, Merson's looking for the tackle, hoping for a throw in, doesn't quite get it but he did a good job, Gallardo back inside the England half, infield it goes and it's with Bertie who substituted the captain Simeone, Gallardo to Zanetti, Ortego, Yara sent the penalty, cleverly lets the ball run, but it was anticipated well by Anderton, and here's Paul in, since looks to the far side, it's a good ball too, look where Alan Shearer is, playing it right back, hitting it long, but the wrong direction for Michael Owen, Owen left up field on his own at the moment, Shearer knows that, Argentina's dark blue shirts have it again, Zanetti, who remember scored that dramatic equaliser, from the free kick just before half time, England 2, Argentina 2, Five live on the BBC. Extra time here in St. Ken and more drama to come clearly. We've already played five minutes of the first period of extra time. Here's Almeida. Almeida slips the ball to Veron on his right foot. He looks down. There's the cross into the penalty. Good header away by Gary Novos. The pushing there was, but the referee says play on. And it's cleared by Merson upfield. Headed back by Shamot. It's going to be a period of non stop attacking play now by Argentina. It's Gallardo to the edge of the penalty area Crespo's there tackle ball beaten away Veron collects Almeida 40 yards from goal England with everybody behind the ball everybody deep Veron shoots from long range straight at Seaman that won't uh, beat David Seaman a shot like that bounced about two or three times before it came to him he's still here with a bit of power but David Seaman able to see that ball quite comfortably it's moving to his right hand side gathering the ball two Argentinian players following up David Batty been on the sidelines now for must be about three or four minutes he can't get on the ball hasn't got out of uh, play has it no Seaman hits the ball upfield only to Veron Veron to Gallardo this exciting 22 year old he spins and then as he brought down by Ince he is and it's a free kick and this is the moment surely to get Batty on they're trying to attack the referee's attention he's not looking now he is and who's going to be taken off you, you'd think it would be Darren Anderton and Anderton knows it Anderton's looking towards the near side and Darren Anderton comes off Batty will come on and we played seven minutes of the first period of stoppage time 23 minutes to go before penalty kicks he's done magnificently for England Darren Anderton he's come off the wing his wing back role has come and played centre midfield he's worked his socks off for England David Batty will just go into that position now and try and shore it up with Paul Ince England hanging on well Darren Anderton's been one of the heroes tonight a great midfield performance they've all been heroes but uh, can they survive 
and can they win this remarkable game in Saint Etienne from the Argentinian free kick played down the right hand side and it's played in by Vivas but it's blocked by Paul Merson and rebounds for another Argentinian corner Gallardo will strike it this is the third he struck in only eight minutes in extra time Gallardo from the near side waiting for a ball to be played to him the previous one must have gone into the crowd doesn't Tony Adams look determined grit and determination from Adams that's what all the England players need Gallardo right footed high into the penalty chair the header goalwards but high and behind for a goal kick and once again Ayala got up I think it was Gareth Southgate was on the near post with Crespo I think it was Tony Adams as well he did, he did get a free header could never get his header down and on target then headed it over the bar again but it's just a little bit ominous that uh, Gallardo has found Ayala twice on corners when you would think that England would just get men in front and block everything and throw everything to defend the corner the deeper we get into extra time the more I think it's penalties and I wonder if England aren't owed penalties success sometime some occasion why not send it to on the 30th of June 1998 in the World Cup Southgate for England forward to Ince Ince spins away well from Almeida and Ince runs forward is he running into trouble no I think he's just running out of legs but he's still going Collins has got the ball oh no the linesman's got his flag up what on earth for what was the linesman flagging for well it couldn't be offside because Paul Ince was the only man forward I think he gave off I think he gave a foul no, it's a Paul goal Lynch kick. In the back, but the referee, a... the referee overruled him and said it was a goal kick. So if Paul Ince had shot and had scored, it would have counted. The linesman's not on planet Earth. <laughs> Neither's a ref. Dear, oh dear. Seven, it was never a foul by Ince. But here's Ortega. Ortega to Gallardo, pushing the penalty. Magnificent challenge by Adams. Wonderful challenge. Butcher class. <laughs> Adams finds Shearer. Shearer up over the halfway line. Adams is still running forward. And now it's taken up by David Batty. Batty evades Almeida on the far side. Adams thinks better of it and retreats into defence. It's still 2-2. England and Argentina. Extra time. Oh, Adams has given the ball away. And now he's stranded. What damage might that do for England? Forward to Crespa. Crespa into the penalty. Flags up for offside. And he's wide anyway with a shot. Well, thank God that this line was on planet Earth because that was offside. Crespo just getting the wrong side of Gary Neville. I don't think he was offside to be fair Sol Campbell was playing him onside so this linesman got it wrong again and thankfully for England got it wrong the right way for us and uh, gave offside Crespo as it was went through David Seaman came out and just slid it past David Seaman's uh, left hand post but a uh, let off England just got to be concentrated make sure that when players go forward like Tony Adams other players can come in and fill that hole five minutes of the first period of stoppage time to go England 2 Argentina 2 and if you are just switching on to five live you really have no idea what you've missed tonight. What a game in Saint Etienne. David Beckham sent off a minute after half time. Already it was 2 2. Dramatic game. Can England hang on? 20 minutes of extra time to be played. Here's Gallardo again to Ortega. Gallardo once more inside the centre circle he tries to feed it through to Zanetti Campbell intercepted and Campbell feeds Owen down the left but the defender's got a few yards start and then anyway the pass was over hit and it's out of play for a throw into Argentina which Ayala takes quickly to Almeida four minutes left to the end of the first period of stoppage time 2-2 Bertie to Ortega Bertie again in, in with a challenge doesn't quite win it but certainly put off uh, Bertie and now Veron left of the centre circle on his right foot Ortega ahead of him he's got two colleagues to his left but he ignores them plays it back now it's taken up by Ortega again 30 yards out hustled out of it by England Batty's there Batty wins it finds Ince Ince and Batty magnificent remember in Rome back together again in this crucial World Cup game extra time here in St Etienne 2-2 it's hit upfield by Seaman towards Owen headed away Batty tries to head it down only finds Almeida and then the tackle comes in from Southgate, but the ball diverts away to Zanetti. Zanetti now, approaching the penalty here, slides it forward, left to put it into the box. Campbell stretching, oh, and the referee blows his whistle to England's relief because Gallardo was through, but there's a free kick to England. Well, there's a lot of tired players there for England. they just got to keep going and keep going, keep going, keep the concentration levels high. That way the ball bouncing free in the penalty area. So Campbell just got in front. I think it was of Crespo and uh, Crespo fouling him referee on the spot then to give it because I think it was Zanetti that might have been through one-on-one -on -one versus David Seaman so the referee very sharp that time for a change three minutes left in the first period 
of stoppage time. Shearer heads it on. Owen chases after it. Davis is there first. Runs it away. Left to his penalty area. Owen still harassing him, but Davis does well. And he's made 20 yards. And England are stretched here, as they have been since the incident just after half time when Beckham was sent off. Ortega skips away. Merson into the penalty area. Bertie crosses low. Seaman saves. Well, for one minute there, we for one second, we thought David Seaman had just misread it. Got a slight deflection off Paul Ince. Tony Adams slipped. The ball played inside Gary Neville to Ortega and his cross was just blocked. And he's just going towards the England goal, but David Seaman able to get back. Vivas for Argentina to Zanetti. It's uh, relentless pressure on England. Zanetti in field, taken up by Gallardo. Ortego wants the ball. Gallardo feeds it towards the right hand side. Davis is up from defense, keeps it in play, close to the corner flag. Campbell across. Davis gets the cross in, and it's a defensive header away. Was it by Tony Adams? It was Adams heading it out of play, near side for a throw into Argentina. Good, good cross by Vivas, and it was Tony Adams flung himself in front of Crespo. That was about six yards out. Any touch by the Argentinian, and that would have resulted in a goal. Great header. Two minutes of the first period of stoppage time to go. Still 2-2. Two -two. England and Argentina. One goal will settle it. Either way, the ball is inside the England penalty area, but uh, safely through to David Seaman. And Seaman throws it out to Neville. Neville just to the right of his penalty area. In St. Field, but it's back to David Seaman. And, you know, Argentina must be tired as well. They really must be. Because, all right, they've got a man advantage, but they've been doing... Uh, all the attacking play since just after half time and just creeping into their minds they must be thinking well hold on we've had all this time and we haven't scored another goal they've had nearly an hour of playing against 10 men now and it's still 2-2 and we're into the final seconds of the first period of stoppage time Batty wins the ball Find Shear. now here's a half chance Owen collects running at Shamot Owen's around Shamot Owen shoots right footed but it's well wide it's into the crowd into the Argentinians and we've got seconds left in the first period of stoppage time that was better for Michael Owen just on his right hand side took Shamot on the outside hit a shot was nothing like the shot he scored in that same penalty area at that same end and it was always rising high and wide to uh, row as a left hand post but uh, you never know when Michael Owen and the ball was up this year he laid the ball off and no one had to use his pace and take on the man one for one here's the netty uh, 15 seconds left of uh, extra time's first period Michael Ingham stand by it's with Gallardo Gallardo 40 yards from goal running forward beat sense on the inside Adam stretches good tackle finding Patty and now we're into stoppage time of extra time Batty gives the ball away a little carelessly but there's the whistle, we change ends and what do you think Terry? Well it's good, England are defending magnificently there's no time to go and see the managers I'm sure the managers will want to come on and say one or two things they can't, referee want a quick change around England battling magnificently Is it going to be a goal and goal or will it be penalties? Are you listening to us or are you just shouting wherever you are? Jimmy Armfield I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think, you know, I think the tension is incredible, really, but the, I, I would like to compliment our back players. I don't think I've ever seen Tony Adams play as well for England. Campbell's been a, a tower of strength. Gary Neville, outstanding, in my opinion. I think, and they've looked so good, it's encouraged the other people in front of them, and everybody's working overtime. It's a thankless job for the front players. The one thing concerns me a little bit is Argent, the Argentines have a lot of possession. You know, and... You always keep wondering, will something happen off all this possession? But at the same time, we've got this niggling doubt. They've got this niggling doubt. They're worried about free kicks and corners, and they're also still worried a little bit about Owen's pace. When he got the ball, they got themselves in a real problem. Right, 15 minutes to go, and then will we be on for the first penalty shootout for the 1998 World Cup? Mike Ingham. Well, England played two extra times, of course, in Euro 96 when a golden goal would have clinched it against Spain and then against Germany on neither occasion was there a goal on both occasions it went to penalties England won the first failed with the second less than 15 minutes to go for England and Veron for Argentina playing from right to left in this final period there's an airborne shot now from Gallardo and Seaman follows it wide Yes, good play by Gallardo. Veron just feeding the ball through. They, they love to, Ortega and Gallardo love to be in that position just in front of England's back four and just behind their midfield as well. And they're picking a lot of balls up there. There's one lapse of concentration by England. One ball threaded through and it could be all over. At the same time, 
is still Michael Owen up front for England. It could be. It could be, of course, England's last World Cup football of this century. There have been no other occasions like this in the whole of the century for England in the World Cup. As Michael Owen has now been injured and England need him on his feet. They're down to 10. They've made all the substitutions. If it does go to penalties, certainly Michael Owen would be taking one. He's got a, no oh, he got a kick on the head there as he fell. So Michael Owen receives attention from the two physiotherapists down there, Alan Smith and Gary Lewin. And the referee has given England a free kick near side. Gary Lewin is, uh, in fact, Michael Owen will be taken off the field. In and Alan Smith will look into his eyes and the doctor, Dr John Crane, is now coming across to make sure there's no concussion. England at the moment are playing Argentina with nine men. They cannot replace Owen. A goal now will win the match as the kick is taken by Merson. Argentina head the ball away. Merson controls it and then stumbles. And Gallardo crosses the halfway line. Back comes Paul Ince with a covering run. And between them, Ince and Batty do the business. As Michael Owen wants to come back on again, Ince lays the ball down the line straight at Ayala, and Ince comes in with a terrific challenge which sweeps Veron off his feet. And Michael Owen's back in the game again, and England are back to ten men, and Batty Stuter and Simeone both boil over down there. Daniel Passareda, the manager, is still looking calm, but they both come out shaking their fist at the referee and at Paul Ince. 13 minutes of extra time to go as Veron plays a dangerous ball down the left-hand side. Bertie's cross is headed away by Southgate to this near side for an Argentina throw in. Well, I don't know what, what better students worried about. Vivas' uh, challenge on Michael Owen almost took his head off, so they, uh, they can have no complaints to Argentina. It's Veron following the, the Argentina throw. The ball is stabbed back by Gallardo. Even Veron now is looking a little tired this great player in midfield Argentina just playing square balls at the moment all 10 players from England are back behind the ball as Veron finds Ortega 2-2 in extra time Ortega's ball in headed away by Adams a golden goal will win the game for either side Holland is still waiting you're listening to five live as Alan Shearer hits a long one back inside the Argentina half straight onto the head of the sweeper Ayala Ayala all on his own there's not an England player within 30 yards of him as Argentina now play the ball up towards the halfway line. We've played already four minutes of this final period of extra time. We're 11 minutes away from a penalty shootout as Veron once more finds space down the Argentina left. Veron gets it back again. The right footed shot in is blocked by Adams. And then as the ball is into the England area, it runs through once more to David Seaman, the man, of course, who was in the England goal in the penalty shootouts in Euro 96 against Spain and against Germany and of course you will all remember what happened the last time England went to the World Cup in Italy eight years ago when they lost the penalty shootout to the Germans Chris Waddle and Stuart Pearce missing the target we are just over 10 minutes away from another possible penalty shootout again and of course the man alongside me here Terry Butcher was very much part of that occasion in Turin the ball now once more with Veron, who's everywhere. The ball comes to the near side, and one of Argentina's three substitutes, Berti. Berti into Ortego. Fantastic challenge from David Batty, but there's only Michael Owen in the centre circle. Plays it short to the right wing, and Alan Shearer. Shearer to Batty, and Batty settles for the throw-in off Shamot. A great challenge by David Batty. Ortega looking for the foul, couldn't get out of the way. David Batty played the ball. He might have played the man as well, and uh, to, to some purists that might have been a free kick, but it's a really solid challenge. The referee deemed it not to be a free kick. England just wasting seconds. Gary Neville just launched his long throw down the right-hand side. The most gripping World Cup tie you could ever wish to bear witness to as England have a throw-in inside, deep inside the Argentina half, and Adams decides, let's go for the golden goal. Sol Campbell's there as well inside the penalty area but England have to get this throw right otherwise Argentina could be dangerous on the break in goes a throw from Neville headed away by Veron a chance for Batty who's never scored for England and he's hit it well wide nearer the corner flag who never scored a shot like that either because that was high wide and handsome to the to the right hand side of Roa's goal probably about uh, 20-25 yards wide and high but uh, good throw in 
by Gary Neville, a long throw, Roa couldn't come out and, and collect it. And in the end, a good flick on by Adams, Un unfortunately for England, went straight to Argentina. Argentina bringing the ball out of their own half. It's that man again, Veron, inside the centre circle. Batty's trying to cover him, and uh, Batty does well. He puts Veron off, and Ince from inside his own half plays it a little too short to Batty, but Batty still gets there. Ince turning away from three Argentina players. Finds Merson, short of the halfway line. Down the left side, it goes to Michael Owen. Owen's little reverse ball, try to find Merson. Only finds Argentina's goalkeeper, Roa. And we've played six minutes already of this final period of extra time. England, since the 46th minute of this game, have been down to ten men, but you'd never have known it. David Beckham sent off for silliness, really, kicking out after he'd won a free kick on a Diego player, Diego Simeone. It's a free kick for a foul on Gary Neville by Bertie in the England right-back position, near side, and David Seaman trots out, ruefully contemplating, perhaps, what might lie ahead in a very few minutes' time. Already approaching the halfway period of this final second half of extra time remember if there's a goal the game will finish Siemens long ball inside the Argentina half Shearer against his marker Shamot Shearer has won the free kick hold on to your hats can England get this ball into the area and do some damage here Gareth Southgate now goes forward oh what a story it would be if he could score the kick will be taken by Paul Merson Batty stays back with Gary Neville. Southgate's in the area. Adams lurks on the edge of the area. Here comes the kick taken by Merson, and it's, it's poor. The goalkeeper thought about coming for it, then realised it was drifting away to the far side. Argentina desperate to get the ball back over on the far side so that they can take the kick. I think what Paul Merson was trying to do was to whip it in towards that near post area. There was uh, Sol Campbell, Adams, Michael Owner made the run in there, but his delivery was poor. It went right to the back post where everybody had come from. A, a quicker and splatter delivery could have, could have produced it. The entire England bench standing up as the ball might fall to Crespo inside the area, but it's a weak ball in from this near side. All of the substitutes down there, and Glenn Hoddle and Ray Clements and John Gorman, all stand and wonder. We've already played three quarters now of extra time. Still the game continues deep into the night in San Etienne. It's 20 past 11 here in the evening. An hour ahead of you in the UK as the Argentina goalkeeper Ra slips the ball away from Michael Owen. Ayala, this very impressive sweeper, finds Veron once more. Veron into Gallardo, halfway inside the England half. Still 2-2 in San Etienne. England mustn't concede a goal now, otherwise they will be out of the World Cup as Ortega twists and turns and then wins a corner off Tony Adams. Good defending by Tony Adams, Ortega is so tricky in the box and if he does get into that penalty area and takes him on, he could always produce a penalty. He looks tired, Argentina look tired. To me, they've mentally gone a little bit, I think they might have mentally set up for penalties, but they've got well, a corner. When you think how far England came to get here, it's a corner kick at 2-2, they mustn't concede. Paul Ince heads the ball up in the air, still not clear. Veron takes control once more and finds Guy Ardu, heads the ball dangerously into the area, headed away once more by Tony Adams. England sitting very deep as Ortega almost gets the ball through, gets a second chance. England clear, not very far. It's Vivas, and that's going well wide into the Argentina fans. And when you think that England set off on the road to France in Moldova, they had to get through matches against... Poland and Georgia and then of course famously Italy all the drama of the qualifying group the ups and downs the roller coaster against Tunisia Romania and Colombia and now what a scenario here five minutes away from a possible penalty shootout against the former champions of the world Argentina and England of course down to 10 men there'll be no David Beckham to take a possible penalty kick the ball is with Veron Veron Again, with that little languid approach on the ball as England back off and Veron's able to slide it wide right-hand side. England still back off and this could be dangerous. It's Veron again and Batty hasn't got the challenge in. Now he has on it. It's a lucky deflection back off Merson and the shot in the end is wide again from Argentina. It was Almeida. I think that might have been a cross rather than a shot, but as it was, it eluded Bertie. Crespo in the box as well and went behind for a goal kick and they just take, taking their time running it down 
England really have dictated the tempo in the second half. They said, right, we're going to defend a little bit deeper. You can't get your passing game going as you did in that first half, in that uh, period then when they had dominance, Argentina. They slowed things down. A lot of tired bodies out there on both sides, not just for England. 24 hours away from a lottery night. We could be having a lottery here. We could be having a penalty shootout unless one of these two sides can score in the last four minutes of this extra time period. It's a throw to England. Gary Neville parts his hair and just takes as much time as the referee will possibly allow him. England have been practicing penalties in private, in training, but they don't appear to have too many options on the pitch there to take them. It's a good ball from Bertie to Guy Odo. Skips around Southgate. In comes the challenge from Paul Merson. Down goes uh, Guy Odo in the area. Referee waves play on. And Passarella and all the Argentinian substitutes almost run on the pitch. Three minutes to go of extra time. Ball still inside the England half. It's Veron once more. Right-footed shot straight into the able arms of David Seaman. We don't mind that if he hits him straight at Seaman. He hit it with a bit of swerve on it with the outside of his right foot straight down Seaman's throat. And now's a chance to get the ball up the other end. But uh, Argentina seems to be running out of ideas. I don't mind it when Veron is having a shot from that far out because they don't seem to be threading these balls through to Ortega and to Gallardo anymore. Still they sing the great escape away to the right. Those England fans. The tension unbelievable, almost unbearable in San Etienne as David Batty tries to get hold of the ball for England and wins a free kick, free kick to England, 15 yards inside the Argentina half, now will they be brave and go for it here, they must do, they have to, only two and a half minutes of extra time to go, and the three centre-backs, Southgate, Adams and Campbell go into the area with Alan Shearer, Gary Neville stays back to guard the centre circle, all the Argentinian players are back, in goes the kick from Merson, Shearer with a header, was it Shearer, Adams rather, Adams with the diving header right across the six-yard area. In the end, it did go well wide, but Adams took off, catapulted himself. But uh, that one went about 10 yards wide of the right-hand post. But the England supporters all joined together to salute their side behind Roa's goal. Great free kick by Merson to the far post. Tony Adams throwed himself above Ayala. It might have been a foul technically. I don't think the referee was going to give it, but he just put, put his header about two yards wide. Great effort. Less than two minutes to go. In two minutes from now, one of these two sides could be going out in a penalty shootout. England and Argentina. The world, I'm sure, is glued to this one at the moment as Gallardo comes forward once more. England get everybody back behind the ball. There's a chance over on that far side for Vivas to get it in. Merson's denying him the space. Good play by Paul Merson. In the end, uh, a goal kick. A goal kick to England. Paul Merson doing very well in the left-back position. And we make it now. We have one minute to go. Well, everybody in the England, in the England team has worked so hard together. They've gone back to a, a familiar back four, which I think has helped the players enormously. Four men in midfield, one up front. Shearer and Owen alternating for that one person up front. But people have come in like Merson and Batty, Anderton in the middle of the park. Real, real heroes. 45 seconds of extra time to go. An extra time that has failed to produce the golden goal so far. 35 seconds to go. And the ball with Almeida. In it goes, looking for Crespo. England once more, it's Tony Adams at the back, the hero there for England, trying to find Ince. 20 seconds of extra time to go. 20 seconds from a penalty shootout. Referee looks at his watch. Glenn Hoddle is desperately trying to tell Gary Neville something. 10 seconds to go. Gary Neville drives the ball on this clammy night, this humid night and throws the ball down the line trying to find Shearer. Shearer tries to control it. The linesman's given the hand ball against Shearer. Argentina have taken the kick, but from nowhere near. The final whistle goes. England's World Cup destiny will be settled in a few moments by a penalty shootout. Well, there's no question that the Argentine players look more upset than the English ones at the end of that. And no wonder Jimmy Armfield, 11 against 10 for, oh, I can't even work it out, an hour and a half, something like that. You know, there's nothing to get upset about because I think Campbell's goal was a goal. I think, you know, I, I felt that, you know, if that would have been counted, I think we'd have won. 
uh, in the 82nd minute. But there it is, they've battled hard in the second half. Batty and Ince have come on and done very well. Ince, in particular, I think, worked overtime in that extra time period. But I'd like to compliment the players for the spirit and the way that they fought because they're playing against a very good side and they restricted them to just a couple of half efforts. And another thing, I think we should have had a penalty. The ball was knocked into the box in the first effort of extra time and quite clearly Shamul jumped up with his hands above Shearer's head. Shearer appealed for it. I thought that was a handball. I really did. And I'm not trying to be biased. I'm telling you what I see on, and I saw it again on the replay. It looked like a handball. But there again... Since saying that, the Argentinians have had a lot of possession and they've worked hard and they're a good side. You know, I'm not disputing that. And it's a pity one of these two is going to go out. But one of the real winners could be the Dutch because this will take a lot out of one of these two sides that gets through. They've got till Saturday to recover. Uh, it's, I know it's, it's been a hard drag, this. This has been a very hard game. Even Veron and I could see it and Ortega, the legs were struggling at Ortega the end. Ortega could hardly walk at the end. I know, and it, take, was gone. it takes at least three days to get over it. But now, let's get through this first. Now that it's a penalty shootout, I'm sure Glenn will have organised it all. When, everybody, when everyone says, oh, we've been practising penalties, it, it doesn't really prepare you for the no, real thing, does no, it? No, because now it comes out now and it's a mental thing now as much as anything. You've got to have that mental capacity to be cool and to strike it home when it counts because this is so much at stake now. The stakes have never been higher than any other penalty they'll ever take, I wouldn't Psych think. Psychologically, do England have the advantage now? No, I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say that. I think, you know, that uh, a lot of it now comes down to the fact that skill, technique and what we call at home have you got the guts for it? Have you got the guts for it? I can see John Gorman is down there he's got, Glenn Hoddle has got his arm around John Gorman, they're just checking on their list That's Teddy right. Sheringham's looking at the list and so's Paul Merson oh dear, they've Let's, got the list yeah, it's, they, well, it's just going to be will one of those have the days list. they will have the list, they've got a list and we'll have it organised and now they've perhaps there's one or two players, you know, that they may have been who are off the field now, so they've got to rejig that and put them in order. The order of the penalties counts for a lot. You know, I, I always think it's important to start well, but anyway, let's see what happens. Alan Green. Terry, what was it like in 1990? Well, at this stage, I was sitting on the bench, to be honest, because I've been taken off as a... as we pushed men forward and got the equaliser, but um, it's just a nerve-wracking thing. The players that have been taken off or the substitutes who are not on the pitch, you just got to be like we are, just spectators and looking at things, and it's down to the players now who have been selected the first five have got to take the penalties and it's up to them to show the bottle and the character that we know they've had they've shown the bottle and the character in the 120 minutes that we've played it's interesting that Baddy Studer who scored of course after just four minutes from a penalty he was substituted uh, so too was Lopez their other strike out and out striker at the starting lineup so uh, they're not available uh, mind it Frank does it matter out there somebody's got to have bottle on these occasions now, Gareth Southgate took enormous criticism from missing uh, two years ago, but he had the spirit, the strength of character to go up and take the penalty kick. Well, so did Stuart Pearce as well. If you remember, 1990 I, was a bigger well, prize than Euro 96, and he, he just strode up and smashed it home, and we saw the, the joy in his face after that. And Spain, well, the thing we must say to both these teams, whatever happens now, whatever the outcome of this penalty shootout, They've given us a fantastic match, Argentina and England. It's a credit to the 1998 World Cup. And if we get a better match than this in the remaining games of this tournament, the four quarterfinals, the two semi-finals, and the final, all of which you will hear in their entirety on Five Live, won't we be lucky? Someone's got to toss a coin soon to decide who goes first. Do, does that matter, Terry? Does it matter? Also the end, presumably. No, not really. I think what matters is the fact that the penalty takers are clear in their own mind. They're completely focused on what they have to do. We're going to the left-hand goal, unfortunately for England, this run in front of the Argentinian supporters. But I think they've got to be focused. They won't notice as a poor as England players. It's about that ball, put the ball on the spot and put it past the keeper. It'll be Argentina who will take the first penalty of this shootout here in saint -Etienne. And it's going to be one of their substitutes. It's going to be Sergio Berti from River Plate. And he's going to hit it left-footed. Seaman, so often a hero two years ago. 
stands on his line. Here comes Bertie, shoots. It's a terrific penalty. Low and to Seaman's left, into the corner, hugging the corner. Seaman had no chance. No, a great penalty with his left foot just curled it around the corner. David just guessed right, couldn't outstretch his left hand to get to the ball. Probably about six inches away with the ball just inside the post. Michael. Well, you just knew that Alan Shearer would lead from the front and take England's first penalty. He's already scored with one penalty in the game in normal time. Argentina have got the first one. Shearer, right-footed, scores high into the net. Shearer raises his arms to the Argentina fans away to the left. It's 1-1. Great penalty struck. To Shearer's left, struck high. Sometimes if you hit it high, it's a risk, but with enormous power. Roa guessed right, but couldn't stop it. So it's 1-1. Can you take can you take the tension, folks? Is it Crespo next? Crespo with a second penalty for Argentina. His goalkeeper Roa isn't even looking. Seaman crouches. Here comes Crespo. Oh, and Seaman saves! Seaman has saved a penalty for England, and how crucial might that be? It's advantage England. He loves his penalty kicks, doesn't he, David Seaman? He guessed right to his left-hand side. Crespo right-footed, struck it well. It was a savable height to his left-hand side. Seaman took it with both hands. Great save. Still a long way to go, but here's a wonderful moment in English football because Paul Ince took a little criticism in Euro 96 for not taking a penalty and not stepping forward and leaving it to Gareth Southgate against Germany. Still a long way to go in the penalty shootout. But if Paul Ince, who's had a magnificent World Cup so far, can score here, England will take a 2-1 advantage. He's not taken many And he's over it. So it stays at 1-1. Well, almost a carbon copy of the other penalty. Same height, same corner, same standard of goalkeeping. Strong arms palm it away, and the strong man Veron comes forward now. Juan Veron, 23 years old, with a job of huge importance. Can Seaman do it again? No, that was a great, uh, great penalty. for England next is Paul Merson. The waiting Argentinians are delighted and so are their fans. So Paul Merson for England. No, the referee wasn't happy with where the goalkeeper was uh, placed. He was standing off the line. And now he's complaining to the referee that Merson has moved the ball off the spot. And the ref referee's given the keeper a yellow card. That doesn't help though, Brian, does it? The yellow well, card doesn't mean anything. But it, it's delaying Paul Merson, and that's tactics. This is real pressure on Merson now. This is real pressure on him. Need this one to go in. He's turned quickly, and he scored with it superbly. Keeper got a hand to it, but it wasn't enough. So we stay at level but it's 2-2 tremendous Three. from Paul Merson this because he delayed it the goalkeeper but still he has the three penalties taken and little Gallardo comes up next only 22 years old now will the baby faced one have enough to beat David Seaman he has. Oh, lovely penalty. What do you want to say? Another baby face one coming up now to take a penalty for England, Brian. Michael Owen, the two youngest players following each other. So 3-2, Argentina lead. Michael Owen with this one. This is a vital kick. This is a really vital kick for the 18-year-old. Wow, did you ever doubt it? 
Did you ever doubt it? Well, look at that. Wonderful spot kick. It's the post and goes in. He couldn't have put it any more in the corner. So we're at 3-3 now. Four penalties have been taken. It has to be five. Now, if Argentina were to miss one now, Ayala, and England could score their last one, now it's down to David Seaman now. Can Seaman make the save of his life here? What a night of football this is. Ayala's kick. Oh, slotted it in superbly. What it means is that David Batty is coming forward for England. And he must score. If he fails to score, if he fails to score, England are out. Batty, who has never scored for England. Good penalty under pressure. The pressure Thir just keeps building, Brian, doesn't it? 34 caps. He's not scored. Do you now? You know him better than anybody, probably. Do you back him to score quickly? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, oh and he hasn't. No. Argentina go through, and England go out.